I'm staking out a gem shop in Bangkok and things are getting hairy. The last thing I want is the cops to be involved. It's hard to believe that all this started four days ago with a $2 tuk-tuk ride. With its rich history and its Buddhist spirit, many visitors consider Bangkok to be a spiritual centre. But the city's religious temples only tell part of Bangkok's story. Another side of Bangkok tells a different tale. One that happens at night, when legions of pleasure seekers from all corners of the world flock to the red light district in the heart of Thailand's sex industry. Yeah, I think the best way I can think of to describe this place is like a sexual theme park where all the uh, rides should be triple X rated. This is the Bangkok I'm here to uncover. Because if there's one thing I've discovered, it's where there's sex, there's scams. I'm joining forces with Jim, an expat who knows his way around the red light district. If we're going to get into any trouble, this will be the place. How would you feel about going in undercover? Yeah, we can do that. I mean, I'm wearing a hidden camera now. We put a hidden camera on you. Down here, the cameraman will be coming in with us with a, another secret camera on as well. Yeah. Hopefully, we won't get into any serious trouble, but... Uh, we'll get into some trouble, I think. Probably. Well, <laughs> Van, are we happy we can get Jim rigged up? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get you rigged up with a, with a camera. OK. And a microphone. Yeah. The plan is to cruise the sex bars of Pat Pong, one of Bangkok's infamous red light districts. You lie, OK, you sit down, you mind. Who's this guy? I don't know, it's just some guy that uh, approached me to show some... What's on that card? Let me have a, let me have a look what's on that card. Ping-pong. Competition is fierce in these bars, so naked dancers outdo each other by performing unusual physical stunts like firing ping-pong balls across the room from between their legs. That's not cat, by the way. See that? You look first, five minutes. You don't lie, you come back. You pay money. You lie, OK, you sit down, you buy drink. So we should just buy a drink, yeah? Yes, sir, 100 baht. So how much is a drink? 100 baht, sir. 100 baht? Yes, sir. Just 100 baht for one yes. drink. No cover charge. No. As soon as we're seated, three drinks arrive at our table. What are these? Did we order these? Uh, no, we didn't order those. Three beers are served without us asking, but at 100 baht each, that's only nine US dollars. So why not? Cheers. Cheers, Jack. Before we get to the five-minute deadline, we decide to settle the tab and get out. Hang on, what? Well, Our bill adds up to 6,000 baht instead of the expected 300. That's $200 instead of 10. Three drinks, 300. Three drinks, 300. You say outside, you say one drink, 100. 100. One drink. You put it outside, and you have 100. You say 100 for one drink. You say 100 for one drink. The manager's getting aggressive. Things are spiralling out of control. I have a 
แรยเดียวไม่ใช่คนเดียวนะไม่ใช่คนเดียวพวกอยู่ที่นี่ไทย Jim switches to Thai, and I can't understand what's being said, but it's obvious the man is threatening us. Thirty dollars, but only after the manager realizes he's not really dealing with the average tourist. We got properly scammed. We're not going to that place again. No, no. You know, these people, they have one-time customers. Yeah, which is know. why he's trying to milk you for every penny you can get out of you, because he knows every you'll never come back. Every penny, because you'll never go back in there. Yeah, unless you're really into ping-pong. <laughs> <laughs> he kept pointing at the corner and saying something in Thai, which I didn't understand. Oh, he's saying if you, if you don't pay, you'll be sleeping here tonight on the floor over there. <laughs> so he's threatening to knock me out, basically. I think that's the first line of intimidation. Exactly. Yeah, you dealt with it very well. I mean, I can imagine as a, a, your average tourist would have found that quite intimidating. Intimidating, yeah. People just pay yeah, it. Yeah, they just, just pay, pay it, it and, you know, and they go, you know, and then... You're $200 well, down. $200 down and you think Thailand's horrible. Yeah. yeah. That's a classic clip joint scam. But it doesn't put me off Bangkok and it certainly hasn't discouraged all these guys. So many Thai girls with older Western men. Surely they can't all be in love. Bangkok's main attractions are packed with tourists, so that's where the rip-off artists will be operating. I'm going to explore the area around the Grand Palace today and see what kind of trouble I can get into. I'm wearing my button camera and the Scam City crew are following me with other recording devices. Why is it that tourists love to be mauled by flocks of pigeons? They're like flying rats. I can't stand them. Hey, what's this for? Okay, okay. Huh? No, 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 it's okay. okay we'll you. We'll you. Huh? No, I don't. I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm, Hello. I'm, okay, <laughs> I'm not okay. a big fan of pigeons, to be honest. Okay, okay. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing? Ah, ah. Hello. Ah. A random stranger thrusts uh -huh. birdseed into my hands, and I'm really not happy about it. What? Did you give it to them? Not one bit. Huh? Money. money? Yeah. For what? Money. For four? What, what am I giving you money for? Yeah, look at 300 baht. Yeah. No way. You 300, 300 baht. You pay how much? Why? You, you put this into my hand so the birds landed in my hand. I didn't have any choice. You pay how much? No, I, why am I paying anything? I didn't, I didn't, did I ask you? I, I, I drop. You drop your price. So two, I two, two. I bad, okay. Toto, I bad, okay. 100 baht, okay. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> 100 baht. 100 baht, okay. It's a little scam you got going here, isn't it? 100 baht, okay. 100 baht. Yeah. I've got no choice. I'm sitting there, you give me the bag. Good luck for me. Good luck for you, I think, my friend. What's your name? Tony. Tony, Tony Connor. Okay. All right, Tony. That's a, it's a cheeky little scam you got going there, Tony, but... <laughs> ah, cheeky, man. Hang on, watch. If I walk past this woman with my hands out, she's just gonna put a bag of bird seeds straight in them. <laughs> well, my mother always told me not to accept things from strangers. As of now, I should be walking around Thailand like this. As far as rip-offs go, the bird scam is low on the list. I'm sure that Bangkok has better scams to offer than this. Last night has left me thinking that some of the women of Bangkok have a few tricks up their sleeves. When day turns to night in Thailand's city of Sin, many tourists leave the Buddhist temples to make their way to the rowdy and naughty red light districts where the streets are teeming with scantily clad go-go bar girls. Just 
sitting here having a beer and I've noticed there's a lot of girls going and coming from that internet cafe behind me. There's definitely something fishy going on in there. I'm going to grab a seat at one of the computers and do a little spying. See what that guy is typing on his computer. They're talking over the internet with a guy who looks like a Western guy. I can see his picture up on the screen. And the girl's telling the, the man there what to say, and he's typing in English for her. And it's some of the stuff that he's writing is quite interesting. The girl is asking the man for money. My name's Connor. What's your name? I'm John. John. You do translation? Yeah. Who do you do translation for? For? For anyone who wants. Is it mostly girls like this This girl here? Yeah. And who are they writing to? Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Girlfriend. So this lady here, for example, is she talking to her boyfriend? Right. Right. I can see him. Yeah. Where is he? Australia. Or Australia. I don't want to talk about it. Too much. She's my good customer. Right. I don't want to be interviewed. <laughs> John is being tight-lipped about the correspondence between Thai girls and their foreign boyfriends. To get some insight into how these girls operate, I'm meeting my fixers Jim and Jamie at a bar near Soy Cowboy, another of Bangkok's legendary red light districts. So it's not just a wham bam, thank you ma'am, off to a room, get it over and done with and, and get on with it. It can be, yeah. but ultimately I think that most of the girls here are looking for something a little bit more long term. Jamie explains that Thai girls don't consider themselves prostitutes. Even the bar girls who charge men for sex. They also get a commission for every drink that's bought for them. But their ultimate goal is to score a foreign boyfriend who'll support them financially. Uh, quite often the money that they, they make through punters through the guys, they, they keep for themselves and the, and the, uh, the actual salary, they um, just do a bank transfer straight up to their, you know, mum and dads. Have you encountered many guys who formed a, a kind of more long-term attachment to the girls? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I imagine if you fall in love with a girl who's in that industry, it's, it's never going to be a simple relationship, is it? No, and, and very often it doesn't work in the end. There was um, an Australian guy who we met who had a similar story that you hear all over Bangkok, in that he met a girl in a bar, had feelings for her, decided he was going to marry her, went to his son, bought a piece of land, got a house being built on it. Anyway, to cut a long story short, he found out that she'd actually already sold the land before he'd started building the house. Right. So she would just keep reselling that land to the next boyfriend. There's somebody else living in the house. Right. Um, the house that he'd built. Yeah. Yeah. And she's back in the bars. She's back in the bars. She's back, back in the bars, the down in Pattaya, doing the same thing again. He's got no house, spent 50000 dollars on the land and God knows what on the house. Um, but he, the, the amusing thing is, is he's back in the bars as well, yeah. doing the same thing, looking for another one that might be uh, looking for love again. It's like an addiction. He's hoping to find that good girl. How do I go about finding one of these girls tonight? I think you have to go in a little bit green. Okay, a little bit off, just off the bus. Or far better off on your own. Yeah. Far better off without me. Right. Yeah, because I, I, I know, I, you know, so, sometimes if I know people, it might work against us. Right. 
I hit the streets off Soy Cowboy to look for a girl. Van, the cameraman and I are wearing our secret cameras to capture the moment. We get Hi. lucky pretty quickly. Hello, how are you? Good. What about you? Good, thanks. Good. Good. What's your name? Connor. So you saw you dancing? Yeah. You look like you're having fun. I turn on the it's charm and it looks like I'm really getting somewhere. So I ask Jay out on a date. You can show all the, uh, the, the nicest things to go and see. Maybe a nice restaurant, maybe a good, uh, oh, yeah, know. all that kind of thing. I know. Go and see some tourist sites, maybe? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, you know all those places? We can try, we can try. Uh -huh. okay. Come back. Cool. Well, that wasn't too difficult. Hopefully on tomorrow's date, Jay will be more forthcoming than the guy at the internet cafe. I'm just waiting for Jay, the bar girl I met in the bar last night. And she's offered to give me a private tour to Bangkok today, but what I'm really hoping is that she might open up to me a little bit and explain to me how she finds a Western boyfriend and, more importantly, how she gets money out of them. We're supposed to meet at noon, but Jay is nowhere to be seen. Why are girls always late? Sorry to say it, but it looks as though Jay's not going to turn up today. Which is very disappointing. I can't let the day go to waste, so I'm going to Wat Po, one of Bangkok's famous temples. In my experience, historic sites are often full of false guides. Rogue operators that offer their services as tour guides, but really have other agendas. I'm going to be posing as a tourist. I've got my map. I'll be filming everything with my secret button camera, and the crew are going to be following me with hidden cameras. Let's see what happens. Immediately, I'm approached. Where are you going? Uh, we're going to what Po? Today, you don't know. Today is the Buddha day. Today's Buddha day? Yeah. Open, you know, for Never heard of Buddha day for before. The... He informs me the temple's closed all morning because of a Thai holiday and recommends I hop on a tuk-tuk to see another temple called the Black Buddha. You think a tuk-tuk? You been the export center? Export center, no. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Really? Yeah. What do they do there? It's a shipping. Export center. Export center for what kind of stuff? Shopping. <laughs> but it sounds really good. I need to get my bag oh, my, from my friend. He's having uh, lunch. You don't go now? No, I need my bag. You take a tuk tuk and then come back. No, no, I need to get my bag before I go. Well, he certainly doesn't want to take no for an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Thanks. A bit heavy. I finally give that guy the slip, and then another one talks to me. Hello. What, Po? It's down that way, is it? Too early. Monk praying. Oh, the monks are praying. This guy has another pitch. A different story to the last one. Tuk -tuk. Right. We have to go meet our friend, but we can we come back. All right, bye. I give him the brush off, and a third guy approaches me with yet another story. Uh, now there are two busy Thai people. They are praying the Buddha. People are praying. Uh, Thai people. Oh no. Buddha day. Praying monks. Closed temple. They can't all be true. Come find you. Okay. I'm going to check out the temple for myself to see what's really going on. It looks pretty open to me. See any monks praying? Well, there you go, that's the reclining Buddha at Wat Po behind me. We've walked straight in, there aren't any monks praying, there aren't too many tourists, and it's certainly not closed, which makes me think, why would all those guys outside tell me that? There's only one way to find out. Hi. 
My driver is going to follow the route mapped out by the guy who lied to me about the temple being closed. Our first stop is the Black Buddha Temple. Hello, good, how are you? The Black Buddha, that is made of black sapphire. Black sapphire, wow. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Okay, do you work here? No. No, you just... I was the Buddhist monk here. You were a Buddhist monk? Wow. Three months, but that 28 years ago, before I went to America. I've been working for United Nations for 16 years. Oh, for the so United been, Nations you worked? I've been in many countries. What did you do for the United Nations? Economics part. Economics, economics. right. But nowadays, I, I work for Royal Thai Embassy. We're in the soap business. Soap. And you contract in Thailand? Or? We have a conference. And then today is one day to do some sightseeing, and then, then? tomorrow we go home. Uh, yeah. May I ask you something? Yeah. <clears throat> You've been export center? No, not, not yet, no. Why don't you go there? Is it good? No, the best. Is it? The best. That's the third time today someone has told me to go to the Thai export center. Do all these guys work together? They're not open for public normally. Oh, OK. They export, mostly they export Thai jewelry, mostly blue sapphire. Oh. But come to the point, why they open promotion seven days a year? Last day today, no tax. And they give 30% discount. Just today? Yes, last day today. Yeah. And you know what the best to buy? Blue sapphire. OK. Yeah. Because blue sapphire mean good luck, long life, and long love. There's no time to waste. My new friend instructs my tuk-tuk driver to take me directly to the export centre. And who wouldn't take advice from a former UN economist? And the export centre looks just like a jewellery shop. We met this guy earlier. He said the best thing to look at while we're here is, uh, what do you say, blue, blue, blue sapphire? sapphire. He, yeah, just a bit. He said to ask you about yeah. quality or? Yeah, no more we export. We're not a tourist shop. But this is on a special, the shop anniversary. So this isn't a tourist shop? Yeah, we are not tourist shop. We are full service. Oh, wow. And no tax, no duty. And yeah. it's the blue sapphire, 1.03. 1.03 carats. And how much does this cost? Wholesale price, 47,000. Whole, wholesale 47, price? 47,000, but today you pay less than the wholesale 30%. 32,000, so. So that's about 640 pounds. So about $1,000, $900. If you buy this in your country, you know how much. do you think in my country? $4,590. Wow. But how do I know this is a good one? You can see the color yeah, and I, the clarity. But I don't know anything the about them, do I? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to buy a sapphire today. You thank, no, I don't think so. But thank you very much. It's very, very interesting. Do you want to see something a little cheaper? Just no, an idea. No, we'll just dub, I'll think about it. Yes, but Maybe you cannot if come my, back because we're last day of sale. Last day of sale. Yeah. Thank you. All this has got me thinking. The guys at Wat Ho and the man at the Black Buddha directed me to the same jewellery store. Coincidence? I don't think so. A little research shows me this has happened to other tourists. I find Doug Cortese, a New Yorker who's willing to share his experience. He came out to me and he told me that the museum was going to be closed today because uh, it's National Buddha Day. Actually, another big part of the story... Sounds was, familiar, uh, except that Doug life. fell for the bait and bought was some jewels. Back in New York, he got a rude awakening. First day I went down to the Diamond District, I went to walk to the store, and I'm like, you know, I want to sell these rings. What can I get for them? And the guy gave me a price, like, I'll give you 200 or 300 a ring or something like that, and I'm like, you're scamming me, because I know people in New York get scammed all the time. <laughs> so I didn't Doug's rings were actually worth half the amount he paid for them in Thailand, 
but of course he'd been told they were worth much, much more. I went to two or three jewelry guys and I still didn't believe that they were worth whatever they said they were. <laughs> That's how good they were. But the other half of me, honestly, in a sense, is very congratulatory for them for like being able to pull it off. And I think you're, you're pulling it off all the time. Right, right. <laughs> You know, he is the reason why we make this show. But what I really like about him is that he can appreciate there's something really clever and sophisticated about that scam that made him fall for it. And that is what I want to get to the bottom of. Tomorrow, I'm going to look for the former UN economist at the Black Buddha Temple, the one who delivered the long pitch about the gem shop. If anyone can explain the inner workings of this scam, it'll be him. I'm on my way to the Black Buddha Temple to confront the man who sent me to the export center. Let's see what he has to say about all the things I learned from my Skype call with Doug Cortese. Well, yeah, of course, the guy's not going to be here. You've got to come with one of the, the gang. No one seems to be at the temple today. A coincidence? Or do the scammers have their guards up? Because we're, want, we're, we're not in... Um, what do you want? Huh? You like to see the... Um, People shooting tourists, something like that, at the temple, right? You think I saw you see some tuk-tuk like that, yeah? There are all so many temples the same. Lots of temples. Thing, lots of temples. Right. I tell you straight. I tell you exactly this is my business. Yeah. Yeah. And how, do you, really how do you get the tuk-tuk drivers to bring the tourists to this, to this temple? Oh, tuk-tuk, they got, uh, call any people, they call around, yeah. But, but do, you, do you have to give the tuk-tuk drivers some money to bring them yes. to this temple? Uh, no, 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 no. Only just buy, get some commission. Like a salesman, you know salesman? So you wait here in the, in the temple, uh, and when the tourists uh, yeah, come, you yeah, tell, come, you just, tell um, them... Just tell, uh, you want to see the temple, see Buddha, and also if you like shopping... So all, you think all the shops have people in all the temples? All the shops, yeah. big shop, big gems, jewelry, also tailor, also a lot, I tell you. I saw you looking for that, there are many. Do you think the tourists know, know it's going on? They know, sometimes we, we, they know also sometimes, but they buy. And Why it, not? Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I mean? But you, if you do like this, you get trouble for me. Would you explain this to us on the camera? No, no. I cannot do that. You can't do it? No, I don't want to show off. I want to be a show, and any shop must be brave to me. Hey, you crazy man, get to me that. Well, if it's There's so many shops. It's good to have your side. I cannot tell you that, because uh, any shop must kill me. You think the shops would be really angry with you if you talk? Yes, yeah, sure. Right. I cannot tell the name of the temple. Maybe they kill me also. Hey, you tell people, come my shop, my shop. They kill me also. You really think they'd, be, they'd kill you? Maybe. This is getting a bit heavy. Whether true or not, there's no disguising the fact that this guy is worried that if he talks on camera, some serious harm will come to him. This temple scam is a lot darker than I thought. Bangkok's proving to be a bit of a hard nut to crack. Today's been a little bit discouraging. So I go up to the bar on the roof of my hotel for a beer. And there, I spot a girl sitting alone. I decide to go for it. Maybe she could be a lead into the Thai bar girl scam. Hello. Hi, do you mind if I sit? Okay. Hi. Cheers. How are you? Fine. I'm uh, Connor. Yeah. Are you? Dewan. Dewan. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. What a beautiful place. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, so just, can I get you a drink? Yes. Yeah? You get two Mai Tais. Yeah. How old are you, Dewan? 24. 24? Yes. Okay. And what do you like to do? I still study. You're studying? Yes, I study marketing university. Okay. Okay, well, 
Here's to uh, good studies. Thank you. Cheers. You ever have a foreign boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little. Or maybe you'd like a new one from the UK. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. I'm looking for someone to maybe show me around a little bit. Show me Bangkok. Yeah. Maybe show me around some of the some of the sites. You think you could do that? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Would you meet me? Would you maybe come on a date with me tomorrow? 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 Okay. Daytime? Okay, then. Daytime? Yes, then okay. Yeah. My plan for tomorrow's date with Tawan is to let her believe there's a potential long-term romance for us, then flip her and convince her to talk on camera about her foreign boyfriends, assuming, of course, she has any. I did everything I could to impress that girl last night. Let's hope she turns up this time to meet me. Hello! How are you? I'm fine. Oh. Nice to see you. OK, you want some fruit? Big bat, 20. 20? Yeah. OK, thank you. Mmm. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's tasty. Okay. Mmm, mm. okay. mm. okay. <laughs> Street food, flower stalls, it's all very romantic. Now for the moment of truth. OK, so there's a, there's a few things that I just need to explain to you. The real reason that I'm here in Bangkok is that I'm making a film here. OK? I'm making a film about lots of the things that go on here in, in Bangkok. And one of the things I would like to talk to you about, if you don't mind being in the film, is about is about some of the girls in Bangkok. Now, don't get spooked, but there's a guy hiding behind the cars over there who's filming us right now. So Anne's not saying much, but she stays put. I think I've just hooked my girl. <laughs> Now, what I'd like to do is, I know you've told me some of this stuff off camera, but what I'd like to do is actually sit down with you mm -hmm. and maybe I can do like an interview with you and ask you, ask you a few questions with a big camera. OK. And I'll talk to you a little bit maybe about some of your farrowing boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> OK? OK. Is that OK? Yeah. You sure? OK, OK. You tell me. OK. OK, brilliant. We take a boat ride along the Chow Prior River to a quiet location away from all the city chaos. Do you ever have a, a, a Farang boyfriend? Yes, I have three. You have three? <laughs> yeah. At the same time? Yeah. OK. Why three? One, one is not, not enough? Not. You're greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you worry that they might meet each other? No, no. No? But oh. in one, one man stay in Thailand. One stays in Thailand. Yes, but him old, little bit. How old? 65. 65? <laughs> yes. And how old are you? You're 25. Yes. It's not too old? <laughs> no. Do you think old men have yes. more money than young men? Buddy? Yes, I think. Right. Everybody thinks same me too, I think. Right. So old you man. just look for the look for the old guy. Yes. Because the old guy has more money. Yes. Does he buy you nice things? Yes. Right. Does he give you money? Yes. How much? For one month. For one month, yeah. Forty thousand. Forty thousand baht for one month. Yes. For just one boyfriend. Yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> but then, what about the other boyfriend? Uh -huh. The other boyfriend pays you too, as well. Yeah, sometimes when when I have problem in my family. What sort of problems do you have in your family? About uh, maybe my university, my mom she sick. About uh, my home, some some month I cannot find money. Right. Maybe, yes. So then, if you can't find money, you tell him you have a problem? Yes. So how much can you make from your three boyfriends three together? Get uh, about 80,000. But usually... Eight, 80,000, that's yes. like nearly 3,000... That's nearly $3,000. Yes. US. And why why are they giving you money? I don't know him. <laughs> Maybe him, him like me, <laughs> I think. For take care of me, because him don't want to work at bar. He doesn't want you to work in the bar. Yes. So he wants you all for himself. Yes. 
But he doesn't know about the other two boyfriends. <laughs> no. <laughs> Secret. You don't think that's bad? No. No? Uh, it's your livelihood. Yes. Yeah. OK. All right. I hope you don't get caught. No. <laughs> You'll be in big trouble. <laughs> yes, Ilya. <laughs> Three men, 80,000 baht per month. Interesting way to fund university. So even though she's sweet and delightful, there's no disguising that this is prostitution. But Tawan seems comfortable with the ethics of her situation. I'm feeling lucky after my meet with Tawan, so I'm going back to the Black Buddha temple. Let's see if my luck holds. Come back again. How are you? Oh, nice, nice to see you. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? You know you sent me to the to the shop. We went there, it's a good good shop. We didn't buy anything there. The thing is mm -hmm. that when I when I went to go to Wat Po, mm -hmm. there was another guy there, and he told me Wat Po was closed. I recount the sequence of events that brought me to this temple and our chance encounter. But, he said, Look, but my friend is clearly not, not happy with where this is going. Is because I have a, I have an idea that maybe you have some business with the Thai Export Centre. Me? Yeah, you. No way. Really? No. I don't know them. So what's your business here then? No, not my business. Your business is not here. No, so you... I come to visit, sit down here, relax. I'm sure you do just come here and sit down and relax. At the same time, you recommend to tourists that they go to the Thai Export if Center. If I met. But why always the Thai Export Center if there's no, nothing in it for you? It's a good place because I bought something from there. Do you own a stake in the Diamond and Sapphire shop? Me, the owner? No way. Part owner? No. no. You, come on, you can tell me. No, no. You can tell me. If there's I a, nothing. I'm just kind of interested in this process that you're involved in because it's quite it's quite sophisticated. There is a clear chain, and the, 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 the tourist is, is passed from one person to the next until they're into the shop. And I imagine if they make a purchase in the shop, then that's quite a, that's quite a lucrative deal. And you're obviously a key player in that process. No. <laughs> huh? What's the problem with explaining it to me? What do you mean? I'm, I'm interested in hearing more about it. Impossible. Impossible? Why do, you, why do you think that? Me, come meet my, meet my director, because I think you... It's not until I introduce him to the Scam City crew and explain that we're here making a film and that I'm just here to learn the tricks of his trade that he starts to come around. I'm not, I'm not interested in whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. What I'm interested in is that it's clever, it's sophisticated, OK? You've thought about this. You've thought about how is the best way to get the tourist into the gem, gem shop. The business, I can tell already, is very competitive. It's difficult to get the tourist into the shop. So you not work in the soap company? No, I love that. You told me you work for the United Nations. You're as bad as I am. <laughs> and out of all the lies, the truth no, begins to emerge. No, I think, so we've been lying to each other. Do you see what I mean? I'm, it's, it, you you so, went to that job, mean you want to learn or what? Yeah, I want to learn. I want to learn how, how you do what you do. You're good, you know. We're doing what you did to me. You mean you want to get the salary from me? <laughs> <laughs> we can come to some kind of arrangement. <laughs> Although not willing to explain all the ins and outs, he is prepared to talk. And as I left, I gave him my phone number and went to a coffee shop to wait. Thank you. Finally, okay. he calls me with the name of a tuk-tuk driver yeah. who's willing to talk. The guy is very nervous. It's taken a lot of convincing for him to agree to participate. Do you find tourists at Wapo, Grand Palace? Yes. Tourist sites? Yes. Yes? Yes. Um, and 
Are you involved sometimes in taking tourists to the gem, gem store, tailor store? Many times. Many times? <laughs> yes. Right. Who is the organizer of the yeah. tuk-tuks at the Grand Palace and the yes. Wapo? Is there a boss? The boss, anyway. Is there, is there a boss? Is there a, a big man? Yeah. 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 So this is the boss of the gang of yeah, the tuk-tuks yes. that work at the Wat Pope. So we need to do this quickly. Yes. Okay. So what I want to know is how does the you know, the, the deal work with the tuk-tuk driver yes. and the man at Wat Pope that puts the tourist in the tuk-tuk? For the, some customer you buy, right? In the export center. Yeah. The tuk-tuk get the commission about 15 percent and 20 percent. So 15 and 20 percent yes. of the purchase. Okay. If not buy, he keep for the gasoline coupon. Okay. Fee, maybe in some customer he don't buy. He gets it in forever. Right. So you always and get the gasoline. Yeah. And purchase, and get maybe some customer he buy. He commission about fifteen and seventy percent. Okay. To be a tuk tuk driver yeah. at Wapo yeah. is a good place because many tourists. Yeah. So is is that controlled by, by the gang? Is it only yeah. that gang that can work at Wapo? Yeah. You have to be in the gang. Yeah. Yeah. And so now that's your boss of the gang yes. telling, telling you, yes. what, don't do the interview? Yes. Right. Why does he not want you to talk to me? I don't know. Why is it, uh, such, the, why the, is it such a secret? Uh, the, 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 possibly that if the, the gang finds out, he maybe get killed, get shot. They'd kill you for talking to me? Maybe. Because they don't want anybody to find out this, this business? <laughs> yes. So it must be a lot of money that you're making for it to be I that think, important. Yes. How much can a tuk-tuk driver make in a week? One, Example. For one week? Yeah. 30 and 40,000 baht. 1,000 to 1,500 dollars for one week? Yes. In high season. That's a lot of money for a tuk-tuk driver. Yes. So you're making more money than most ordinary tuk-tuk drivers? Yes, yes. Because you're in the gang? Because no, you because can work I'm working for you, right? You know what I mean? I work for you. Right. He pay for me that everything. Just some police touch me, he pay for me. If the police touch you? Yeah. So you're paying him protection? Yeah, he, he pay for police for me. OK. How does the boss Be, because I make money? take for the customer to him, right? You take the customer to him? Yes. Oh, so is the boss the boss owns the jewelry shop? Yeah. Oh, the boss of the jewelry shop. Yeah. He owns all the tuk-tuks. Yes. So you take them to his shop. Yes. Big, big people. Big people. Are you scared of this person? Yes. That guy was pretty nervous about talking to me, and you can kind of see why, because if what he's saying is true, then this whole tuk-tuk scam is a lot more organized than I thought it was. Who would think that a small-time scam on a $2 tuk-tuk ride could be part of a racket where the players are afraid for their lives? Next stop, Scam Central. The jewelry shop. Just there. Yeah, just, yeah. just past it. Yeah. It's about there. Yeah. About there. Sure enough, a couple of tourists are leaving the store, hopefully empty handed. The Scam City crew sets up the camera from a safe distance as I talk to my fixer about our confrontation. How do you think they're going to react? How do you think the store will react? The, the, the I don't know. You don't think that, um, you don't think there's a risk? Suddenly our van is surrounded by angry people. Just as the tuk-tuk drivers knew I was snooping around the temples, word must have gotten back to the jewellery shop owners. Yeah, 
want us to go to the police station now. Go, go to police right now. This is illegal. Yeah. Finish. Finish. Shut down. Oh, I'm What do you have? I want to go. Can we just go? Let's just go. The Scam City crew and I get out of there before the police turn up. If what the tuk-tuk driver told me is true about his boss protecting him from police intervention, then there's a good chance the cops wouldn't be on our side. When you're a tourist, you think you're anonymous. But you're often being watched and sized up as a potential payday. This is how the good scammer makes a living. I'll have to leave Bangkok without cracking the top tier of the infamous gem scam. There's a lot of money at stake and the players guard their game literally with their lives. You know, people come to Bangkok looking for the exotic, but they want it at a knockdown bargain price. Whether it's a bar girl who promises to be your one and only, or a jewelry store selling you knockdown price gems, this is a very expensive place to learn that the best things in life don't come for free. It's all countersigned by the, by the birth right. and death uh, registrar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the back streets of Delhi with the man who's about to end my life. It's absolutely staggering. I'm still I'm slightly taken aback that I've died. I've died on the 27th of January. I'm dead. Delhi is one of the world's great historical cities steeped in history and spiritual tradition, making it an attraction to visitors from all over the world. It's a vibrant melting pot of 17 million, but of these, some 60,000 survive by begging. Primary targets include tourists. Sitting ducks in Delhi's busy traffic, these beggars will take anything they can get their hands on. With the help of secret cameras, the Scam City crew will follow my every move as I uncover the elaborate tricks many of them use. We're even turning my taxi into one giant mobile undercover camera. My mission begins cruising around Delhi's hotspots in my spy taxi looking for beggars. It doesn't take long. Every time we stop, another child approaches the window. But I'm yet to see a scam. All that seems to be going on is street selling and outright begging. No money, no papa, no. Gem rupees. You hurt your arm. Look at the bandages on the kids. Tyler, so, like, go back, go back round. I want to have a look at them again. Yeah, go back round. I suspect that not all is as it seems. Hello. Can I see a bandage. Oh, you hurt your... That's not real blood. That's not real blood, is it? Here, on your biscuit. Let me see. Is that real blood? The kids have put some sort of red felted pen on their bandages to make it look like blood. Make them look like they're seriously injured. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Clever. Clever little kids. Is 
the kids at the roundabout there have got an inventive little scam going on. It's quite common for kids to beg at uh, traffic lights and roundabouts in Delhi, but these kids, they've put bandages on their arms and on their heads, and not only that, but they've coloured them in with red felt tip pen to make it look like blood. What I need to do is to give our fixer a call and get him down here because I want to go back and I want to talk to them. George, my fixer, arrives and we discreetly observe the little scammers at work. Some of them are selling flowers, and some of them are just asking for money. It's kind of like a dual business, I think. I don't know, it depends whether they're all together, it's hard to tell. Yeah. And you can see the people in the park here are preparing flowers, yeah. which must be the flowers that are making their way out there onto the, onto the street. Yeah. You can see a lot of cut leaves and petals lying about plastic bags. These kids are clearly well trained. They wait for the lights to turn red, then they approach the cars in packs, using every emotional trick in the book. They're incredibly persistent. It seems to work, especially with tourists. It's pretty organised. I can't believe they're running it by themselves. OK, well, George and I have been watching them from just across the street here, and there's an, an older guy, might be a father or an uncle, who's selling flowers, who's staying really close to them, and I'd say he's probably the, the Fagan character. So if we're going to approach them, I imagine he's the person who's going to get involved. Um, so what I suggest we do is that we go in together. George will translate. Michaela, you follow close by. Steve, you maybe hang back for now until we make first contact, and then we'll see if they're happy to talk. We're immediately confronted by the gang leader, who's called Kailash. Hey, how you doing? We explain who we are and our intentions. Kailash seems intrigued and leads us to their makeshift home to meet the rest of his crew. Huh? They're as wary of us as we are of them. Where, where about India are you from? But slowly, they open up. Rajasthan, OK. What do you do back in Rajasthan? So for half the year you could be farming in Rajasthan and then half the year here in Delhi. Right, okay. So whose idea was the injuries? And you make more money with the injury than without? Yeah. Yeah. Alongside the fake bandage scam, the gang sell almost dead flowers. They peel off the wilted top petals so that the buds appear fresh. The women buy the flowers from a market several miles away for around 10 rupees a bunch haul them back to the park and sell them on for 100 rupees. That's about $1.80, a whopping 900% profit. They store the flowers in a broken water drain. If they're not sold within two days, all the profits are lost. Who are your best customers? Are they in, in, Indian people or tourists? <laughs> What I'd like to do, if it's all right with you, is come back in the morning and see you getting ready and the kids getting ready and then watch you going out with the kids and seeing how they work on the street out here. So we meet here after you buy the flowers tomorrow morning? Yeah? Yeah. Well, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow? OK. Before I meet up with them again, I want to get the lowdown from someone with a bit more insight into Delhi's beggars. Kunwar Singh is one of the city's foremost investigators. Begging is a huge industry. It is very well organised. 
it is not one person or one family enterprise. Uh, it is almost like a mafia operations in the world. They understand the psyche of a tourist. And there's a persistence. They, they'll, they'll bug you. They'll tell you, be OK, please give me something. Makes those kind of faces in a such a manner which you have not seen somewhere else. And you get so pestered and something you develop sympathy also. Ki, OK, oh my god, is only one dollar for this guy. He's only asked for so much. If you uh, calculate in terms of money, uh, you'll, it is mind boggling. The kind of money every day this begging industry is uh, earning is a huge. Kunwa wasn't joking when he said the figures were mind-boggling. A 2008 study reported that India's begging industry was worth $45 million a year. I guess I'll see tomorrow how much the traffic light gang are pocketing from tourists. But right now, I've something much more pressing to deal with. Not only is Delhi famous for its street beggars, but also for the dreaded Delhi belly. A lot of tourists get this, and I'm no exception. I need a doctor fast, so I go to the nearest clinic. Medicine. I guess Indian problem, Indian medicine. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cure anything? Yeah. Yeah, anything. Anything? Sir? Cancer. You can cure cancer. Wow. Just with this stuff. Amazing. Sorry, to start again. I take. The doctor asks for 150 rupees, about three dollars for a concoction of weird-looking herbal medicines. In this state, I'll give anything a go. Now it's time for me to hit the sack and see if I can't sleep this off. After a night spent sitting on the toilet, I'm still feeling a bit rough. As well as tasting awful, the herbal medicine I was prescribed hasn't worked. I need a second opinion. Paranganj, the heart of Delhi's backpacking area. A mecca for young tourists travelling on a shoestring with its cheap hotels, cheap shopping and cheap food. This is surely the best place to sort out my rotting guts. And luckily, everywhere I look, there seems to be a doctor's sign. Another pharmacist there. All up this street, there's an incredible number of doctors and dentists and pharmacists. I mean, everyone's heard of Delhi Belly, but it's like sickness is the number one industry here. I'm spoilt for choice, but I settle for one that claims to be qualified for almost everything. So what happened to you? Uh, I don't know if there's something I've eaten, but since the middle of the night, I've had stomach cramps, diarrhea all morning, and a headache since last night as well. I've taken two paracetamol, but it hasn't. Okay, yeah. okay, just wait on, let me check. looking quite sick right now, you know. It could be his dysentery or some tropical infection. Tropical infection? Yes, of this, course. Uh, I have to start some antibiotics for you, and maybe we can do a blood and stool check for you. Either we are starting IV, which we can give for a few hours. OK? OK. Don't worry, you will be OK, man. The doctor seems to be throwing everything at this. Surely there's an easier way to cure a bout of Delhi Belly. How many rupees? It's in 1643. 1643, yes. $32. That's twice what the average Indian earns in a week. Way more than I was expecting to pay. I think I may have just been ripped off.
but I can't do much about this now. I've got a date with the traffic light beggars. My plan is to see their operation up close by becoming part of the crew. The question is, will it work? When I arrive, the kids are already preparing for their day's assault. Yeah. Getting into costume, getting into character. <laughs> that went easier than I thought. I'm in with the crew. Let's see if the kids will reveal some of their techniques. When you're at the traffic lights, pretending to be her. Do you notice the tourists? Do you no notice the foreign people? Yeah, among the tourists. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see the pain. Let me see the pain. <laughs> Exactly, that's good. <gasps> <Ooh>. <laughs> These kids seem oblivious to the dangers of this business, but their parents are all too aware. I came here to investigate a scam but Lally's story makes for difficult listening. The reality is that dancing between cars is a life and death business. Before I take my turn to run the traffic gauntlet, they lay down some ground rules. How, mu how much for each one? Turn. one. Hmm? one turn. 50 rupees, this one, 50 seconds. OK. Nothing less than 50. Nothing less than 50. Okay. And you think I'll be OK? You think I'll sell any? Okay. I'm selling these. You've got your injured arm, see it makes more money. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Everybody, look left, look right. Let's try and be lucky. It's actually quite nerve-wracking being out here. This is Delhi in rush hour. If my stomach wasn't already churning, it would be now. Can we interest you in some roses? Very good. Smell very good. No, sir? Flowers today, chefs. Reds, whites, only 100 rupees. Bargain. No flowers. Oh, well, maybe next time. Bye. We're doing our best. Flowers? <laughs> This street selling business is not as easy as it looks, but the kids work the passing traffic like old pros and don't come back empty handed. I need to up my game if I'm going to compete with them. Just 100 rupees for a bunch of flowers. They smell beautiful. Only 100 rupees. I sell it for 25. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll give you two bunches. Yeah, yeah. Two bunches. I know it, I know it. You're, you're bargaining with me. Yes, you are, I am. You're bargaining with me. Bargaining. I can do two bunches for 100. I was told to go no lower than 50. Okay. One red, one white. How's that? Enjoy the flowers. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. After several hours, I call it a day. Okay, I'm knackered. Like everyone else in the group, I hand over my earnings to Kailash, the keeper of the money. Ooh, it's hard work. It's hard work. I think I did OK. I think I did OK. I got 100 for one bunch. 
I got 100 for another bunch. I got another 30, and then I think I got another 20 as well. It's okay. But how did I? How did I do? Did I do okay? I made two 250 from uh, four. I sell four or five bunches. Yes. <laughs> very good. So I come back again tomorrow. Okay. 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 Bye 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 bye. See you later. Bye 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 bye. I only earned around five dollars, a small return. But if every beggar in Delhi earned the same as me this morning, that's over a quarter of a million in just a few hours. I can see why this is a multi-million dollar racket. Something's still troubling me. This morning, I went to see a doctor who over-prescribed me a bunch of antibiotics and charged me through the roof for them. With so many doctors in the backpacker area of Paraganj, are other tourists being ripped off too? The best place to start looking is probably the Delhi Medical Council. The name that keeps coming up is a Dr Bansal. He agrees to meet me, but as I make my way to his clinic, I'm slightly uneasy. I'm only working on a hunch here and might be barking up the wrong tree. In a city of 17 million, how many doctors are there in Delhi? Oh, sir. If I doctors in Delhi are approximately 45,000. Equal amount of unqualified doctors who don't have any degrees, they're also the same. <laughs> so there's the same number of real doctors as yes, fake doctors. Yes. So it's a 50 Even it is more than. If you go and see a doctor on the street, you've a greater than even chance that they've never even been to university. Yes. Not yes. only are some of these doctors ripping tourists off by overprescribing, but they might not even be real. Is it all across the board? Does it affect tourists, travellers, people who live in Delhi, everybody? Everybody. A few years back, one of a minister died at the hand of a quack. He was given an injection by a fake doctor, and with that wrong medication, he died. Let's say I wanted to be a quack in the morning. What would I need to set myself up? Nothing. You don't require anything. You just write, doctor so-and-so, purchase this stethoscope in rupees 100, means $2. Then take some one table. You can take one table, one chair, and one stool. This is very strange. It's extremely worrying. Very strange. I guess tourists are probably a target because we come here with so much health insurance. You know, we're, we're a bottomless pit of money, aren't we? Correct. These quacks who are uh, slightly uh, shrewd, they know they can earn more money from the foreigners. Mm. So the way they make money is just to give you as much, diff much treatment as possible, whether yes. you need it or not whether you need or you don't need. It sounds like a dangerous place to get sick. Yes. The pennies dropped. I now see why there are so many doctors in Delhi. With over two million visitors to this city, this over-prescribing scam could be worth a fortune. But what's truly terrifying is to think you could get sick here and end up being treated by someone who's an out-and-out -out quack. No other way around, so it faces upwards. It's time to go undercover to see if I can find one of these fake doctors. My fixer, George, has got my back and is also rigged up with a secret camera. I visit several street-side clinics. They all look pretty run down to me and certainly wouldn't be my first choice. But if you're travelling on a backpacker's budget, this could be where you end up. So far, all appear to have certificates and conduct what seem to be thorough medical examinations. I'm drawing a blank 
even though I come out with enough medicine to open my own pharmacy. But I don't have to look too hard or too long. Are you the doctor? Are you the doctor? Huh? Doctor? Yes. Yeah, you're okay. I look around but can't see any certificate. I think maybe I might have eaten something. something. Really <coughs> cramps in the stomach. Headache. Yeah, headache, cramps, and I've had diarrhea this morning. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You feel heaviness of burning here? Might if I give you an injection from the relief? Injection? Yes. Of what? Of what? Check the infection inside the most problem. I manage to avoid the dreaded needle, but he then dishes out a small bottle containing a brown liquid of who knows what. Now the alarm bells are really ringing. He then passes me a mysterious assortment of pills. You feel vomiting too much, you take two. Otherwise, you take two at night and one. In the day, even if you feel vomiting, vomiting tendency, and as you take one. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. You're okay. How much is that? It's two fifty. Two fifty. That's about five dollars. I would have to be. I'd have to be dead before I'd let that guy give me an injection. <laughs> There's absolutely no way. Well, I've been to my doctor with a jippy tummy before, but I've never been prescribed anything like this. A bag of multicoloured pills and a bottle of brown sludge. I give the names and details of all the doctors I visited to Kunwar Singh, the private investigator I met. He confirms that everyone is registered except for the so-called doctor who wanted to stick a needle in me. His records were nowhere to be found just like his medical certificates. The following morning, my investigation into fake doctors is blown wide open. There's an incredible story in today's newspaper about a 90-year-old man who has spent time in prison for producing fake doctor's certificates here in Delhi. Apparently he's produced over 50,000 in the last 15 years, which means if those people are actually practicing, that's a lot of fake doctors out there. I'm on my way to meet the man who did a four-year stretch for flooding Delhi with unqualified doctors. They trained at his fake medical college. Balwant Rai Arora explains how he set up his unofficial college, providing what he calls guidance to people, helping them obtain medical certificates. He's keen to point out, however, that they became unqualified medical professionals rather than doctors. It's a little bit strange where I come from to hear you talk about an unqualified medical professional. What is an unqualified medical professional? Unqualified medical pro professional, as not doctor. Who independently kar rahe hai, but qualified doctor ke roop mein nahi. Who unqualified ke roop mein kar rahe hai, dat tak unki ye padhai puri nahi ho jati. Tab tak wo unqualified ke roop mein hi karenge. How on earth does someone practice as an unqualified medical professional? This is complete madness. How many unqualified medical professionals do you think you gave guidance to? More than 45,000. More than 45,000 you gave guidance to. That's a lot. But have you helped people get obtain certificates in the past? Only certificate, not degree. Not any degree of any kind. No degree. But if you have provided a certificate, to an unqualified medical professional, and I go to see that person, and I look on the wall, and there's a certificate. How do I know that it's your certificate and not a genuine medical school certificate? Up on his board, 
जो भी उनका नाम है यू आगे जरूर लिखा होगा यू एम पी अनकालीफाइड मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर Now that guy might look like someone's granddad but he's responsible for knocking out 45,000 quack doctors here in Delhi and that by anyone's standards is a pretty major scam. I came to Delhi to investigate beggars that scam tourists out of millions of dollars. I didn't expect to come across a medical racket run by crooked doctors. But something tells me this goes much deeper than just hiked up prescription bills and quacks. After digging around, it seems that it's not just the doctors who are scamming, but tourists are also getting in on the act. In collusion with real doctors, they file bogus medical claims against their insurance companies for sometimes serious amounts of money. These doctors are not just the street-side rip-off artists I've come across so far, they're connected to Delhi's criminal underworld. Let's see if I can bust one. Now, the doctors are clever. They don't approach the tourists themselves, they use touts who work in the tourist areas. So if I'm going to find a dodgy doctor, a really dodgy doctor, I've got to find a dodgy tout. I return to Power Ganj with my fixers. Our plan is to get a dodgy doctor to illegally sign me off sick with a medical certificate so that I can't fly home. We separate to get the word out on the street. Okay. After several hours, we reconvene. I've come up empty-handed, but one of my fixers has a lead. We've heard of one tout who's particularly active uh, and he operates from a hotel, small hotel, just around the corner. And this sounds like it kind of depends on the doctor actually being a genuine doctor because the insurance companies are nobody's fools. If it, we can't do this with a, with a quack doctor, can we? We need, we need the real deal. Okay. Yeah, correct. So as soon as I've got the bit of paper, he and I are Absolutely. partners in crime. Okay. No more. Yep. <laughs> Well, this is the first step in the chain. So the guys have gone off to see if the tout that we've heard about is the real deal, and if he is, then I'll meet him later and negotiate what I have to pay him to get access to a dodgy doctor. The waiting is nerve-wracking. This is the first time I'm going to try and scam the scammers. The fixers text me to say they're about to go in undercover. मेडिकल सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए था एक्सटेंड आपको बनाना है नहीं नहीं हमारा एक बंदा है कहाँ के है वो वो इंग्लैंड का है तो उसको तो सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए ना हाँ हाँ वही पक्का डॉक्टर होगा हाँ एम बी बी एस मंत्रालय रक्षा मंत्री सबको जेल हो रहा है सी बी आई को छानबीन कर रहा है तो इसको कौन चुनता है काम पक्का पक्का हो गया हम भी खुश आप भी खुश बस इतनी सी बात है the warning from the tout is pretty clear. We're not to cross him. 
Once I step over the line into Delhi's criminal underworld, there'll be no turning back. In a few hours, I could be joining their ranks. Later that evening, I get word the deal is on. I head towards the meeting point and join up with my fixers. The money. How did you? Well, no, you want my on. details too? I hand over 3,300 rupees and all my information. We're told to wait outside while a second tout contacts the doctor. Half an hour passes, nothing's happening. This guy's silence is all a bit unnerving. Without warning, the tout suddenly leads us through a narrow maze of Delhi's back streets. We're not told where we're going, I just hope this isn't a trap. It looks like we're finally here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. I, I wish you read what is written here. <laughs> Certified that Mr. Connor Burt man whose signatures are given below with passport number it name is suffering from acute bronchitis with breathlessness. Yeah. He is advised complete bed rest for 10 days. That is from 5-3 to 14-3. Okay. During this period, he is not fit to travel by air. Fine. So, that's, that's great. This doctor wants us out of here as quickly as possible, but I need him to incriminate himself on camera before we leave. Yeah. If I use this for insurance uh, and they contact you, uh, you, you'll say the same yes, thing. Yes, I tell it this. He's suffering from uh, breathlessness. We'll do that. No problem. Okay. And you've done this before, so you know this will work. Oh, certainly. Nothing to worry. Nobody's going to challenge it. Okay. But you, no, but you know that from experience. Yes, yes, yes. Certainly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay. Thank you. Please. Okay. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully, I'll be feeling better before too long. <laughs> yes. Should be better by now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, oh. bye. Well, I've been signed off with acute bronchitis for the next nine days by a doctor that never even examined me. I mean, if I did have a flight that I wanted to move, there you go, that's all I need to put in an insurance claim and get the money for the flight back, which means I can go home whenever I like. It's amazing to me that he would do something like that for only $80, but that really gives you some insight into just how rife this kind of behaviour is here. And it makes you wonder, is there any piece of paper that you couldn't get signed? Last night was all a bit heavy. I came face to face with some pretty dodgy scammers. Fraudsters who use their status to help rip off insurance companies. But they're small fry compared to where I'm about to go. Can I pull off the ultimate insurance scam, which carries with it the ultimate price, the cost of my life. But I need to test the water one more time. 
Yesterday, I scored a medical certificate that lets me extend my trip here with my flight paid for. Now I want to see if I can get some spending money to go with it. And I think I know just the doctor. The crook that fleeced me of my cash by prescribing me a pharmacy worth of pills for my deli belly. Hello, doctor. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. I told you. I yeah. Okay. You did the trick. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. It was not a trick, you know. No. It was evidence-based. Evidence-based, good. A trick is something, you know, you try, you may, may not succeed. Yeah. That's a trick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I knew what you will. So... Cool. Um, I need to pick up the receipt. Are you sure there's nothing in there that we could... Um... Well, bus, you just finish off the antibiotics and right. that's all. Whatever was there, we have treated. There's no opportunity to treat anything else in there. No, no, nothing, you know. Did this you catch from some food or water? Sure. We seem to be dancing around the issue. I need to cut to the chase. This is quite a low claim for my insurance. Whatever you paid us. I'm just wondering if there's any way of um, making it a little bit more, How much more worth my while. How much more? How much your insurance pay? Let I tell you what we can do for you. What could you do? Tell me how much you need, you know. If we made any access, this is, first I make it clear, this was the laboratory bill. You have already okay. paid me 2,630, you have to make the balance. So, I mean, could we make it 50? 50, well, little pushing it. I can make around 20, 25, Let's go tw Why don't we go 25 and then it's worth my while putting in a claim? So that's what claim. I'm, I'm already suggesting to you. I've just succeeded in upping my medical insurance bill from 2,600 to 25,000 rupees. I'm on the edge of committing a major fraud claim and I can't believe how easy he's made it. We can say the same sickness, we keep you for IV and this. We have bed upstairs, so all this come like this. Will you just give me the paperwork? We will give the paper to you, of course. I give the medical report, receipts, breakups, okay. everything. Okay. So, if, but if you are ready to bear the expenses, overheads. Okay. What we say, overheads. 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 Okay. <laughs> it's shocking to think that if I was to go through with this, I could rip off my insurance company for close to $500. This is one of the easiest scams I've ever pulled off, but with some of the highest returns. Now I have to prepare to take this to the very end. My fixers have given me the name and number of a man who has far-reaching contacts into the criminal underworld. Hello? Hello, is that Mr Singh? Yes, who are you? I don't recognise this number. You want? Well, I believe you might be able to help me acquire uh, a, a, a forged document. What document do you want? Uh, a death certificate. You want death certificate? Yeah, I do. Why do you want death certificate? Um, for insurance purposes. You want to make claim against insurance company, your it, death? My death, yeah, exactly. He'll call me back with the details of another contact. I'm on dangerous ground. What I'm doing is highly illegal and I don't know if I've convinced him enough to trust me. All I can do is wait. Hello, Mr Singh. Yeah, take this number. Take this number. First thing, this I give you now is procedure. My man, his name is Bobby. OK. So far, so good. I've arranged to meet him later tonight in a back street in one of Delhi's suburbs. This plan makes me feel uneasy. It involves a lot of players from frontline touts to government officials who have a lot to lose. But it's his town and I guess his rules. As I set out to meet Bobby, it occurs to me that I'm a few minutes away from what could be one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Hi. Hey. Hey. 
Captain Bobby. Your friend of Mr. Sings? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, tells me you might be able to help me with a bit of paperwork that I'm after. What kind of paperwork are you looking for? Well, I believe it may be possible to, uh, Hello? say, fake my own death. When you mean, say, a death certificate? Exactly. Uh, can we arrange? So it'll be a genuine death certificate. It's going to be a genuine death certificate. Right. And that's something that I could use for an insurance claim. If you want to. Right. OK. And uh, how much is that going to cost me? Uh, 25,000. Rupees? Yeah, you need rupees. OK. So, I could take the 25,000 rupees I scammed from the fake medical certificate and use that to pay for my death. And that means, in the end, I could net hundreds of thousands, if not a cool million or so. And that's big business. We arranged to meet in a few hours. As I kill time, I get to thinking how many other tourists Bobby has killed off and how much they've scammed from insurance companies. It's possible Bobby's friendly demeanour is a mask. I must remember this guy operates in a multi-million dollar fraud industry run by serious criminals. How on earth did I get here? Are you early or am I up? Am I late? No, we are on time. OK, come on. Yeah, it's this all... is what you asked for. It's all done? Yeah, it's all done. Oh, my God. It's my... It looks official. It's all countersigned by the... by the, the birth and death registrar. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, officially, you are. You killed me. It's absolutely staggering. I'm still... I'm slightly taken aback that I've died. I've died on the 27th of January, and yet here I am. Well, I'm getting scared, mate. <laughs> I'm talking to a dead man. Uh... So, it's as simple as that. I'm officially a dead man, but potentially a very rich dead man. Delhi is a city attracting travellers from all corners of the globe. Drawn to its history and culture, many come here with the hope of finding spiritual enlightenment. I, however, will leave having uncovered a more materialistic side. During my time here in Delhi, I've discovered that this city is full of scammers. Many of them are scamming just to survive, but there's lots of others making some serious cash. I'm leaving with my eyes opened to just how easy it's been to pull off my own medical scam. If you looked at my records, you'd see I've been hospitalised with a critical illness and now I've even been pronounced dead, which is funny. I feel absolutely fine. I'm in Hong Kong, far off the beaten track, on my way to meet some new friends. Hong Kong's notorious gangsters, the Triads. Do you think there's any part of the shopping and the nightlife that isn't controlled in part by triad gangs like yours? Hong Kong, a free trade paradise perched on the edge of China, the world's manufacturing powerhouse. Nearly 50 million tourists visit each year, most of them from mainland China, bringing with them disposable fortunes. And of course, there's no shortage of locals waiting to help them unload their cash. Well, two of the main reasons for coming to Hong Kong are the nightlife and the shopping, and the tourists here spend a lot of cash on both. And this may have a reputation for being one of the safest cities in the world, but one thing I know is, wherever you get tourists and cash, you also get scams. 
China may be all about newfound wealth, but there's a real appetite for things from the past. There's a thriving antiques market here. Hollywood and Cat Street is the centre of this trade. With cash-rich mainland Chinese in the market, prices are high and business is booming. But I'm in the market for scams. Hi. Can you go No really of this no, but this is really old. Oh, okay. One set. Yeah, in one set. Really oh. This gold. Gold. This gold. It's gold. Gold, yeah. Hmm, okay. Is it very old? Yeah, fairly old. How old? Uh thousand. Thousand years. Thousand, thousand years old. Yeah. And these are how old? This thousand. Thousand years old. Yes. Which dynasty? Is that Qing? No. Uh, no Qing. Uh, uh, Tang. Tang dynasty. Uh, uh. A thousand years old. Back home, I'd have to go to a museum to find something like this. Yeah. Oh, this for drinking. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Mm. From Hong Kong or from China, China. or China? China. It's Tan Dynasty. Yeah. And it's 1800 Hong Kong dollars. Yeah. Thank you. One? One, yeah. OK. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, I've bought an item for about $240, which apparently is from the Tan Dynasty. It's a cup found in mainland China. That makes it about 1,000 years old. Now, call me suspicious, but something about that doesn't quite ring true. So my next port of call is going to be someone that can value that for me and tell me whether that, in fact, is a genuine article or not. Hello. You have some nice stuff. Can I show you something? The person that sold it to me told me it was a 1,000 years old. Do you think that's a thousand years old? You bought in Hong Kong? Yeah, I bought in Hong Kong. Then you ask the shop who, who sold to you, you know, you better, you know. Why? Because yeah, you don't, you don't yeah. want to get them in trouble? Yeah, well, you we know. <laughs> Sometimes between dealers, we have crash, you know, to try to avoid, right? Sorry? Uh, between dealers, you yeah? Asked, you ask who, who sold to you. Where you bought, you know, and okay. then you back to the Because you, you have a crash between dealers? No, no, we, we don't, we don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, I've been to a couple of places on the Hollywood Road now to get my piece valued, and I'm not sure whether there's some kind of solidarity amongst shop owners going on here or what, but they're all saying that they don't recognise that piece or know what it's worth or how old it is. I'll have to find another way to check whether I've bought the real deal. When the sun sets and the neon's turned on, Hong Kong streets start to feel like a science fiction movie set. All the actors are out playing their parts on this beautiful illuminated stage. I hit a street cafe for a front row seat. Noodles are good. Mm -hmm. Salty. Mm -hmm. You're from Hong Kong? First time. First time in Hong yeah. Kong? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Me? Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Where in Thailand? Bangkok? Yeah, yeah Bangkok. Bangkok, yeah. yeah. What's your name? Connor. Connor. Kiki. Kiki. Hi, Kiki. Yeah, How are you? Yeah. You and me go something? For a drink? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Are you local man? That's a blatant pickup, and I'm big enough and old enough to know she's after something. But what? Yeah, I mean, it's a good one, a couple of times. 
go in this one. Yeah, yeah cheers, Kiki. Nice to meet you. How old are you, Kiki? Me? 35. 35? Yeah. Ladyboys are pretty common in Bangkok, but I didn't expect to meet one here in Hong Kong. She'll have some tricks up those silky sleeves. Tomorrow, eating and shopping, okay? Eating and shopping. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's what you do here. Cheers. Yeah, I've been to Bangkok a couple of times. White. One bar leads to another as she works me out. Can we have a bottle of the Pinot Grigio, please? Yeah. Can I have a dance? The dance? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I have to be drunk to dance. <laughs> I go to the toilet. Okay. My first thought about this girl was that she's some kind of like widow. So I just texted the crew and they've replied to say that she hasn't gone anywhere near my drink, which means that she isn't. And that makes me even more confused. What is she up to? She's had a $13 taxi ride and a few drinks, but she's got my number and she'll be back. This place is like the perfect designer city. Everyone gets what they want. Bargain shopping and friendly locals, the views are spectacular. It's difficult not to be seduced here. Last night I had an idea about my Chinese antique. What if I tell them it's not from a local dealer? So, can I ask your advice? I bought something when I was in mainland China, and I'm just wondering before I... Neil. Sorry? It's a copy. It's a copy. It's not real. No. New. New one. New. For sure. Okay. So it's not a thousand years old. No. If this one is original, it costs more than a million Hong Kong. So it might be a fake. Let's get a second opinion. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I can help you. Can I show you a piece of bronze and maybe you can tell me? I'm. Do you have... Could you, you tell? Want to see it's real or? Yeah. Oh, it's not very old. It's, it's, it's not new. It's new. I, I can teach you to see it. Uh, can you see the new bronze? The color. New, oh, right. Okay. It it's comes the off on the corners. So how do they make it? How do they make this bit look older? They put a uh, chemical or something? Maybe. Many way. I don't know how to tell you in English, but it's it's very, now the people are very easy to do it. They will make fake pieces to sell it. So this piece is new. Right. Okay. So it's definitely not a thousand years old. Yeah, no, 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 definitely. Well, telling people this was from mainland China seemed to do the trick. They were a lot happier to tell me the truth about this. And the truth is, it's not a thousand years old, because if it was, it would be worth 100,000 US dollars. If you take a closer look, you can see that there is new brass on the end of the feet, and that's because they've made it look older on the rest of it. Now that I know all that, I think I've got the information I need to go back to the shop and see what they have to say for themselves. Hello. The piece that I bought, 
I'd just been to speak to a few other experts in the area and they showed me. You see the, uh, the new brass? This is a classic sign of a copy because oh, the chemical... Oh, the chemical... <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. I don't want my money back. I'm not here to have an argument about it. It's fine. But you know and I know that this was made in a factory in China probably in the last couple of months. She's on the back foot and she calls in the boss. When do you think that was made? This was made... Uh... About a thousand years back. I can, I can check the date for you. Check the date. Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting. Because so, all the experts that I spoke to up on the Hollywood Road, they, yeah. they all say it's made in the last year. What they also said on the Hollywood Road is that if that really was a thousand years old, it would be worth tens of thousands of US dollars. Maybe even a hundred thousand US dollars. Can't be. The what? reason is. Yours is fake. No. The reason is we pay cheaper rent and they pay higher rent. And if this is really a 1,000 years old, yes. I can sell for $10,000. If it's made in a factory in China, I can sell it to a tourist for $250 and make a quick profit. Isn't that what's happening here? Even a fake one, you have to sell for 230 So it is a fake one, you sell it for 230 Now we're getting somewhere. It but doesn't matter if it's a fake or real. It matters to me. The matter is the item. Matters to me whether it's real or fake. If you tell me it's a thousand years old, I, I want it to be a thousand years old. I don't want it to be one year old. So what can I say? When I was 20, when I joined this line, my boss tell me one thing. The customer always right. You can never argue with a customer. So customer always right. Okay, so this customer says... Yes, you think it is fake, okay? That is fake. You think it is real one? That is real one, so you are always right. This is a whole new retail philosophy to me. He didn't sell me an antique, he sold me a story. Now comes the nitty gritty. OK, and I say you paid about maybe five bucks for that. Well, maybe even less. Up to your knowledge, maybe even less. Go on, if I tell, tell me and I'll go. If I buy 100 pieces, will be cheaper than you. You yep. buy only one piece. You pay five dollars, I buy a hundred pieces, maybe I pay fifty cents for the same material. Really? So you could buy a hundred of those for fifty bucks? I mean, 50 bucks. up to your theories. I know, but I'm not about my theory, I want to know the truth, that's all. The truth is that... That's the truth? Mm. You could buy a hundred of those for fifty dollars? No, I cannot. I pay a hundred ten. Oh, it's US. come down, it's coming down. No, I'm talking about a hundred pieces. But then how could you buy a hundred pieces of that? No, Unless I it was a fake. It, according to your point of view. Hmm. My point of view is that you'd be lucky to find a hundred thousand year old fakes. Too lucky. He's starting to go round in circles. Did you ever hear of a factory in China that just makes these? Maybe makes hundreds of them? Maybe thousands. Maybe hundreds. They can recover. Copy piece means you got to make a mold first. Make a mold. You got to make a mold first. And the mold costs you more than the profit. That means you have to make at least 10,000 to cover your cost of the mold. You think they made 10,000 of those? At least, if copy. To me, where you get these from? Mainland. Mainland? Only mainland can be that cheap because the mainland have nothing to pay for their uh, labor. Yeah. Wherever, whatever, however, money comes, trick comes. Black meal, gangster, everything, what they fight for, money. He ushers me out of his shop. The truth is, it is really bought in mainland. The truth is, it was made a month and a half before. A month and a half before? Yeah. Not yesterday. He took the buyer is always right principle to a whole new extreme. I wanted facts about the fake antique business and he tried to bamboozle me with relative theories of truth. But whichever way you look at it, it was all about money. Everybody is fighting over the money. 
including gangsters. The antique dealer's confession makes me wonder, who are the people making dirty money in this boom town? I'm still trying to get under the skin of what's going on in this town. So I've agreed to meet a guy who's done a bit of time in prison here. He said he'll take me on a tour of the neighbourhood. Hey, so. Connor. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Nice good. to meet you, yeah. You too. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, OK, let's have a walk and talk. Yeah. Sounds good. Great, let's go. I used to be a policeman working in this area. You were yeah. a policeman in this yeah, area? Yeah, 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 yeah. 40 years ago. Wow, OK. <laughs> How do you go from being a policeman to becoming a pastor? Now, well, when I was a policeman five years here, at, at that time, there was a lot of corruption, gambling, or prostitution, or gangs activity. In this, I, in this yeah, area? Yeah, I was involved part of the activity as well, as a policeman. You were involved in yeah, legal all, activities? Yeah, 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 yeah. And after five years in the police force, I was arrested and put in jail as well, yeah. You were put in jail? Yeah, yeah, because of the corruption. How long were you in jail for? Uh, two years. Wow. And after then, I would become a Christian when I was in a drug rehabilitation centre. Okay, were so, you using drugs yourself? Yeah, 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 my heroin, yeah. So I was involved in drug trafficking in this area too. A former bent cop who dealt drugs and took them too. Just the kind of guy I need to take me behind the neon curtain. Do you still come into contact with a lot of those people? Oh, at my church, there's a lot of these kinds of people. Most of them from the gangster background. Now we're going to this part, is the central part of the Red Knight District, Temple Street. So here is more gangs activity and prostitution. Okay. So we, we might a little bit careful. <laughs> Be a bit careful? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. This is a low cost prostitution here. Yeah. yeah. It's a girl. Hiding her face. Yeah, yeah. That's why he. Yeah, my left hand side is, is the gangster. My left hand side is the gangster. They are protecting this kind of girl. Yeah? Right. Okay. Yeah. So the guys there that we just walked past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The girl is hiding her face. Gangsters hidden in plain sight. If the pastor hadn't pointed them yeah. out, I'd never have known. They only allow one house, one prostitute. Yeah. Okay, so if there's one prostitute in, in, in one a house, house, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. I think I'm going to ask you to ask They speak Mandarin from mainland China. They come here and want to get some fast money. Uh, How much? How much? So it's uh, 138. Yes. For massage? Massage, 138. Yes. Is it 450 is it, minutes? Is it really massage or is it something else? <laughs> yes, yes, sure. For how much? Get uh, uh, okay. Huh? For 300 masturbation. Yeah. 300 Hong Kong dollars? Yeah, 300 yes. Hong Kong dollars. For, for, for he an... said that it's cheap for you. Normally, we charge the tourists, the foreigners, $500. Why is it cheaper for me? Handsome boy, you're handsome boy. Handsome boy, so yeah. Handsome boy, so charge you cheaper. Discount. Yeah. Another sales pitch. This time, complete with flattery and a discount. They only do the massage, um, masturbation. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to do the real stuff, sexual intercourse, then you have to go to other places. Oh, yeah. So the camera. Yeah. But maybe this girl tells us where do we have to go to get full set? Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Even though I know, but I will not tell you the business because we have competition. What is it? Okay. She said that I will find a good lady for you. That's full sex. Full, full sex. And will she be a mainland Chinese girl? Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. She said yes. How long have you been in Hong Kong? One year. <laughs> One year. You like it? You don't like Hong Kong? I don't like it. Doesn't like it. Hong Kong is a nice place, not a bad place. Hong Kong is the place you earn money, not the place for living. Mm. Better than working in a factory in China? Yeah. 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 
It's legal to be a prostitute in Hong Kong. A lot of cameramen here. What are you guys filming today? This <laughs> where, where are the police inside? Yeah. The police are inside there? Yeah. The police doing a raid here or something? Yes. Oh, are, are you journalists? Yeah. A man is taken away. His identity kept secret. I think they are undercover police. What have they seized? Are you guys undercover policemen? Hmm? You're undercover? Is this a... R I can tell you. Well, you don't have a uniform on, so I'm guessing you're undercover. Uh, it's a pornography DVD. Pornography DVDs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pornography is legal. Yeah, they have four stages. This is uh, called stage four. Stage four is with the uh, sexual intercourse. So yeah, prostitution is legal, but pornography is illegal. <laughs> Porn, pimps, and gangsters. There's dirty money being made here, but who's controlling it? And would you say most of the gangsters are old Hong Kong families, or have they come in from mainland China? No, from the, the basically is from Hong Kong. Yeah. So it's still very still much controlled very much, by yeah, yes. Hong Kong gangs, triads. Yeah. Yeah, to try it. So what would be the best way, if I wanted to meet those kind of people, what would be the best way for me to, to do that, do you think? Well, it's, it's not easy in front of the camera. You have yeah. to use secret cameras? Yeah, even the then... secret camera, they are very smart, the gangster. They are very smart. I can call you, and if you, if you bump into any of those guys, or you think of anyone else, it might be interesting for me to meet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be fantastic. The Triads are an ancient Chinese crime syndicate. Their criminal activities are shrouded in secrecy, so it's not going to be easy to meet them. They don't have a Facebook page. It's morning, and I've got a date with my new best friend, Kiki. And guess what she wants to do? Shopping. How are you? Let's see. You good? Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, good, yeah. yeah. What are you looking for today? Me? Yeah. Makara. Do you spend a lot of money on makeup? Yeah. For me. What colour do I think suits you? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That one suits you, I guess. Uh, Probably this one. Okay. Yeah, I think. think I need some? Nike? Nike? Huh? Oh, you're buying loads. You're miss back. Yeah. But am I lending yeah. you the money or are you? Ooh, really? $1,550. Yeah, Wow, that's a lot. You need all this? Yeah. Okay, really. Wow. I just bought you a lot of makeup. Why don't you try it on? Okay. Yeah, try it on. I've already spent over $200 on makeup for her, and now she's trying on a dress, which I'm pretty sure she wants me to buy for her as well. I've got no idea what's going on and what I'm supposed to be getting out of this experience. Is it really as simple as just buying stuff for her? Or is there a longer game where I could lose a lot more? You like it? Yeah? 300, yeah. Thank you. When are you going to wear that in Hong Kong? Like nothing. <laughs> hey, hey, no, are you going to buy me a present? Uh -huh. you, you buy me a present now? Would I buy Tommy? You want to buy me a Tommy Hilfiger top? Sorry. I buy for you. Okay, then buy, buy it. Buy a bag? Yeah. Wow. Well, coach. Small bag from Coach. Which one? Which one? You like that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. How much is it? Yeah, okay. $1,250. Tommy? I'm sorry, honey. I just don't have the cash. You spent all of my money. I don't have any more money. Look. Come on. Out. Tommy? I, 
I, I don't have two bags. No two, no bags. You don't have a bag. All right, well, we'll go bagless. Yeah, I got it for you. Yes. Totally. Okay, all right. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Well, if you include the money I spent last night with the dress and the enormous bag of makeup I just bought then, the total amount of money she's taken from me is north of about $400. But I've got a feeling that's only the beginning. She's going to take me for a lot more. I'm on my way to Mong Kok the most densely populated place on the planet. The heartland of Hong Kong's triads and a centre for the region's counterfeit goods and electronic markets. I get the feeling that everyone down here is trying to hustle a buck. Hello. Buddhist, you're a Buddhist monk. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're from China? Come on then, I could do with some luck, to be honest, in this town. This is for luck? And how much does that cost? Finally, I found something that's not for sale. I'll just give you a, don a donation. $20? Yeah? No, 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 no. In Hong Kong, don't pay anything to you. In Hong Kong, it's in Indigo. Are you police? I can tell you. Why can't you tell me? I'll tell you. Protect the people in Hong Kong, you know? You protect the people? Yes, sir. Yes. Are you secret police? No, 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 no. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say you're secret police? No, 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 no. Don't say that. But uh, very special. Very special. Okay? You're your special secret police? <laughs> Where are you from? Are you carrying a gun? No, no, need that. You don't need it? I can. Touch my arm. Yeah, don't touch, touch your arm. That's it. See? See? Wow. Okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you like? Hong Kong Batman. He's like someone from a Hong Kong movie. But it's hard to tell whether he's a cop or a gangster. One thing's for sure, he's rattled the monk. Who's that guy? You know him? Prince. <laughs> well, a strange guy. Are you a holy man? You're not really a monk, are you? How much more do you make in Hong Kong than you would make in China? Per day? Wow, so it's worth being here. As he explains his life story, a passerby signals to me. But you don't think he's a real monk? Huh? You don't think he's a real monk? Not, not, really. not a real monk. He's greedy, I think. He's greedy? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, he's, he's going to make a run for it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, I, I... He knows you busted him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the end, it amounts to the same thing. Monks aren't allowed to beg on the streets of Hong Kong. And maybe that's what the warning was about. Nothing goes unnoticed here. Then I receive a text from a contact she set up a meeting with a triad gang member. He'll meet me in a bar overlooking the harbour. Forty-five minutes is a long time to enjoy the view. Either I'm being wound up or stood up. I'm 
sure Kiki is trying to get me on an advanced sugar daddy scam. I'm already in for a few hundred dollars, but I see that as a down payment on unlocking the secrets of what she's really up to. Hey, hello. hello. Beautiful, isn't it? Come in, sit down. How are you? Hi, kissing me. Are you well? Yeah. You like the dress? Yeah, and not too. No same too, no going back. Kiki looks great, but she's not exactly my type. A bit demanding. I like you. I like your eyes. I like you to my head. You like my hairy arms my and my hairy chest. Yeah. Kid me. Kid me. Kiss you? Yeah. No, I think that I might give you the wrong message. <laughs> Cheers. Champagne or Champagne. Champagne. We order champagne. Yeah. I pay, right? Yeah. Good man, you pay, you know. You're good man, you don't pay. If she wants me to fall for her, she's going the wrong way about it. It's hot and my patience is wearing thin. So what is this? This, what, 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 what is happening here? Don't leave. You don't buy me two, but I'll move back. I didn't buy your shoes or a bag. You pay me money. Well, why am I paying at all? I am. I can do you. You're my friend? Yeah. No, but friends don't, friends buy each other drinks. Friends buy each other presents. <laughs> you not know, married? I'm not married, no. Yeah. Tonight you buy friend for me, you buy okay, okay. I don't think so. I don't think that's I don't think that's what happened. But you buy friend for me. I'm not your boyfriend. <laughs> One beer? Um is this your job? That you find people and then you ask them for money? Is it that simple? It's a lot of effort for a handbag and a few drinks. You, you know, tonight you cannot buy friend for me? Tonight I cannot be boyfriend for you, no. You buy friend for me? No. No? No. Yeah. Finish. You don't pay me money, yeah? Finish. Yeah. How much money do you want? One million. So there it is. She wants 130,000 US dollars to pay for an amicable separation. And what happens if I say no, I'm not paying? Um, 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 tonight I, I, I call you a hotel today. You call, you call at my hotel? No. You don't give me, you don't give me money tonight. Me call you a hotel. So it's a blackmail sting. I pay up or I get embarrassed at my hotel by a ladyboy. Nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I have to pay you money. One million. You pay me money. You're not. No, no. You pay me money. I'm not going to give you no, money. No, no. I'm not going to give you money, <laughs> no, Kiki, no. because you don't no. believe any of this. No, no. You're, yeah, not, yeah. you're not really you're not a girl. Okay. No, this, this is all just a load of deceit and nonsense. Time to come clean. You know there are people following us, you know there are people with cameras, you spotted the people walking around with cameras. The tables are turned. Kiki isn't happy. No, no, I'll be here, I'll be here. It takes a bit of persuasion, but finally Kiki agrees with the help of a translator to reveal her techniques as a transvestite blackmailer. How do you go about finding a tourist to pick up? But is it important that they look rich? Look like a rich man? Yeah. And do most guys recognize that you're a, a transsexual? How much money do you think you make from this? When we were going to break, you wanted me to give you to give you money oh, to break up. Yeah, I, you and me, you and me finish. You don't give me money, but I lady, you man. And do yeah. people give you money when you, yeah. you break up with them? 
And how much money can you make from? Ba sai tong thai ba kei yao ki to. Go le e tong thai ba kei yao mei ji kei zuo mei yao gong a yu yu kei yao gei dao qin a. But did anyone ever give you money for separation after they just had sex with you? Ba lao le ta fan hoi le fan sao le ko tong yao yao ye pe pe ngao ma. Fan fan hai sao gao gao ko hai. Right. How much money? Ta ta so le hou lien zai le wan le ko yao yu 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 le pai le ko nam zai. ถ้าโหเลงใจเกลโหเลยวันทำต่อเยอะเยอะเยอะเยอะอะไรไปแล้ววันนี้ก็จือเลยก็เคยเจ้าแล้วก็เคยก็เยอะสีหมายไกลจีอ่ะเยอะใส่หมายไม่อยากเออเลยเลยหมายปีงอเลย Was it valuable ring? อ๋อไกลจีคือหมายก็ให้ผู้ทงเลยหลกชิ้นมันชัดชิ้นหมาชิ้นปัดชิ้นมันเจ๊อืมก็โตเยอะเหมือนมันเลย And is that the most you ever got from one guy? หมายเยอะเยอะก็ชิ้นหมายคือหมายชาแนลปีงอเขาต่อยเออแล้วก็หนักแต่ปีเติม I started out thinking she was a black widow, and then thought she was looking for a sugar daddy. But once you stop handing out the sweets, she turns into an extortionist. Well, it's been bugging me what's been going on here for the last couple of days, but now I can see what's actually happening is quite a sinister scam, and it's not light-hearted or at all fun, because what she's trying to do is to get you to feel like you're in some kind of relationship, and if that's potentially embarrassing to you, then she's got you exactly where she wants you, because she can then get you to pay her to leave you alone. I've seen things in Hong Kong that most visitors never see. I've had a glimpse into its underworld, but I'm still no closer to finding out who pulls the strings. The triad trail has gone cold. I didn't pass my rooftop audition, or did I? It's my last day in the city when I get another call from the triads. They want to meet. The location, a karaoke bar, 40 minutes drive away, close to the Chinese border. I've been stood up by these guys before, but I'm still on edge. The triads are one of the most feared crime syndicates in the world. The karaoke bar is deserted. We roll the cameras, and I walk through the endless maze of soundproof booths, looking for triad members. The gang will only talk when they're ready, and on their terms. Did you grow up in Hong Kong? And when did you start getting involved in criminal activities? Where, where do you sit in the hierarchy of your triad gang? And how does one reach the top? And what kind of criminal activities are your triad gang involved in? How do you profit directly from those activities? 通常都係一個社團入邊佢自己控制嘅，咁啊控制之後咧就誒佢哋所酒吧嘅咧就通常都係用誒保護費。So how does it work now with with mainland China in the business？ 內地咧，而家我哋公司就係會幫佢辦證落嚟，辦證嘅錢就我哋公司自己會出先，咁落到嚟去做就投五十個客，就係通常都係歸佢又冇錢分嘅。佢要免去做咗五十個客，五十個客之後，佢哋就開始分錢
。咁佢哋通常都係會分到、呃、因為我哋做都係千五蚊咁啊，咁通常都誒五百蚊貴公司，一千蚊佢哋。But how how much would a good girl earn for you in a week？ 依個數就、嗯、其實就都唔好方便講俾你聽依、這個，因為係始終都係歸公司嘅利益，有少問題就唔講得。Are you involved in other activities such as counterfeit goods？ 誒、呃、都有，呃、l v 啊，一啲名牌啊、Gucci 啊嗰啲都會有。依、這個市場其實係好大嘅，真係好大依個市場。咁其實個你話個生意額都每日嘅生意額都都有幾廿萬嘅 daily， 唔會嘅。I mean, do you think there's any part of the shopping and the nightlife that isn't controlled in part by triad gangs like yours？ 誒，大多數都係有人控制㗎啦。你話冇就呃人㗎啦，依樣嘢就。You come across as being very businesslike and calm. And I'm wondering, are there times when people step out of line, and there has to be another side to you? Now, I'm usually going to the back of the line. I'm just doing business with foreign things. I'm usually not going to do anything in the back of the line. I don't need to be so angry, right? I'm going to get money, so it's no problem. All right, but what about the rest of your gang? 嗯，佢哋自己做，其實都係跟翻大家有個秩序去做。你有做嗰份，咁佢又去做嗰份，即係仲大家唔好踩個界，其實就都相安無事嘅。It just sounds to me like organised crime here is just another part of Hong Kong PLC。我哋係自己主要係為翻我哋自己啦。咁其實嗯，各有各做啦。What is it that makes Hong Kong so good？ At organised crime. 其實香港都唔係好大嘅啫。咁你社團都係人，其實佢哋大家坐埋都有溝通嘅。咁如果大家唔係為咗利益去競爭嘅，咁其實你有你揾，我有我揾，以和為貴。Thank you very much. There you have it. The scams on the streets of Hong Kong are being run by the triads like a well-oiled machine. It's all about the money, and nobody here wants to be the person that draws attention to that. Much better that everyone just quietly gets on with the business of making money. It's extraordinary that the notorious triads agreed to talk to me. But it almost felt like a PR exercise. Just another multinational corporation promoting itself. Hong Kong is a glittering marketplace, a shopper's paradise, where everyone gets what they want, especially the person selling it. I'm in Mumbai, India's biggest city. It's the country's business and entertainment capital, and home to the renowned Bollywood film industry. There's big money here, and lots of tourists. It's a perfect breeding ground for scammers. But I've got a problem. My apartment has been gate crashed. Uh, what do we have to do to make this go away, Tony? Smile, talk to him nicely, give him some money, and that's it. It's all getting a bit out of hand. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Go, whoa, 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 come on. Arriving at Mumbai Airport, there's no time to waste. The crew have told me the scams here can start from the moment you get off the plane. They've identified a gang of dodgy cab drivers, and I'll be filming on my own hidden camera. The crew are outside, rigged up with cameras, so we should be in a good position to capture anything untoward. 
In the arrivals hall, I immediately spot George, our director. How you doing, man? He'll pose as my tourist buddy and be secretly filming too. Taxi. OK, um, we want to go to the Strand Hotel. Do you know what that is? Yeah? OK. We do something seasoned travellers never do. Take the most insistent driver. Strand, Strand Hotel, my friend. I'm told this journey should take less than an hour, which is a relief since I've just got off a 10-hour flight, it's boiling hot and there's no air con. We haven't gone very far when, without me asking him to, the driver pulls over. Hi, sir. Welcome to India. Good morning, sir. Oh, hello, Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Good, sir. What are you after, mate? Yes, yeah, sir. You're getting a ride with us. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I've got no idea who this man is. Perhaps he wants to share the taxi fare. You are your first time coming in India, sir? First time coming in India, yeah. Yeah. OK. So, sir, this is the RTO form. Sorry, what's this? So, uh, RTO form. You want to fill up. RT officer. Road Transport Corporation. What for? You are coming in first time in India. OK. So, you fill up this form and we will give to RTO officer. Well, so I have to fill in a form just to drive in a taxi? Yes. Do you have a job title? Yeah. What is it? I am the travel agent. OK, right. One of actors, Brightbeat, Angelina, Brightbeat, they are coming. I am giving hotel. So you're Brad Pitt's travel agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he like? Oh, very good, man. Very good. You like very him? Very good. If you want to go to hotel, I have some hotels. Well, I've already booked this hotel. Oh, OK. Is he quite clear we're going to the Strand Hotel? Because yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure about his English yeah. before. All the roads are blocked. So we are going another route. Oh, he knows a, yeah, yeah. a different way. It's a different way, but a good way. So, sir, what, uh, what are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling a bit confused as to who you are. Why, sir? Why you are confused? <laughs> I am with you always. I am with you, sir. I know you're Don't with me. Don't worry, sir. Don't worry. That's why I'm Don't confused. worry, sir. You are giving me some tips, sir. What for? You are giving me some tips, sir. Yes, sir. I've got no idea who this bloke is. He's got in my taxi. He made me fill out a form that's clearly not an official form. You know, what's a tip? One thing is clear. Form or no form, he wants my cash. So, sir, this is the RTO forms money you give me, sir. But, uh, do I not give this to the road traffic officer directly? Where are you found traffic officer? If I don't know where he is and he's not going to take money from me, yeah. why do I need to so care? If you don't give me, yeah. myself paying. Why are you paying? Because I am the travel agent. But you're not my travel agent. Where are we now? We are going to the hotel. On the way. Well, this, this doesn't look like where my hotel is. Very good road. Yeah, very good road. It doesn't look like a good road. It's like the back and beyond. Who are these dudes? What is this? We make another unexpected stop, this time a roadblock. The travel agent gets out to investigate. Sir, there is some problem. I are saying you are not going through this road. Why? Sir, this is a religious thing, no, sir. So we have to go back that way, then? Sir, they are not going through this side, sir. No, this is one way. This is a taxi ride from hell. Or to hell. This is the main point. Can we come through? No. No. Arjun. Sir, if you want to go, he's saying you pay 51,000 rupees, then you go. 51,000 rupees? Yeah. It's like a thousand dollars to yeah. go through there. No, sir. This is nothing. I'm sure there's plenty of genuine religious practice in India, but I'm a little skeptical about this. Meanwhile, the travel agent seems to be practicing his Bollywood dance routines. What's he doing now? He's dancing around. What's he, what's, what's he doing? This is like being kidnapped. No, oh, sir, I am with you. Why are you are kidnapped? Because you're held, holding me here in this car, and now you're trying to extort a thousand dollars out of me to get me through here. Please stay. Or what? What are you going to do? Are you going to harm me? Are you going to injure me? So, sir, please stay. No, we are right. going, sir, very hard. 
Yeah, my head is as well. I'm not going to give you $1,200. What are you talking about? You can't know me. For what? What am I getting? This is a kidnap, and I'm haggling with you over the price of my ransom. No, no, you're not kidnapped, sir. I'm a travel agent, sir. This is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous situation. I'll tell you what. 40 pounds. They asked for $1,200. I give them 40 pounds, $60. Oh, my God, it's so hot. I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm in the middle of God knows where, and I'm desperate to get to my hotel. Oh, look at that. The religious festival just ends. Just like... We are going to the highway in two minutes. I've now been in this taxi for almost two hours, and I think I know why we're getting nowhere fast. I'm, I'm starting to question Sir, you. you. Sir, go for it. If you have any problem, this problem is my problem. My problem is just you. <laughs> You're my problem. Why? You're my problem. Oh, sir, why? I was fine until I met oh, you. Sir, I'm taking not a single rupee from you. If you want to give me some tip... What please? on earth would I give you a tip for? Because, sir, I am, I am your guide, sir. You're my guide to what? The sir? highway? You're the worst guide sir? ever. Sir, please see. Maybe he's taken my criticism to heart, because all of a sudden, he slips into tour guide mode. Yeah! What? Ah, Barba, Chatta, Waterloo, let's see. What are you showing me? What are you pointing at? Very good looking, sir. No, that's not a view. Are you out of your mind? I have so many problems. Oh, don't start crying. Oh, my God. I have so many problems, sir. Please give. You have lots of problems. I, I can see that. The taxi ride is endless. It's like nearly two and a half hours which feels even longer when you're roasting in 40-degree heat inside a vehicle with no air conditioning. And then we reach a hotel in the middle of nowhere. This is the Sumi Palace. Yeah, but I asked for the Strand Hotel. This is your hotel, sir. It's obviously not my hotel. Exactly. Your which, hotel which bit of that hotel says Sumi Strand Palace. Hotel? That's the final straw. They haven't even brought me to my pre-booked hotel. My guess is that if I check into this one, then the travel agent gets a juicy commission. It's definitely a scam, and it's time for some straight talking. OK, listen, I haven't been completely honest with you. This is not my first time in India. I'm interested in what you're doing, because what you're doing is a scam. No, you're playing no, 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 no. You're playing all the roles, no, no. working with other people. It's interesting. No, no, no. I... He's asking for an incredible $200 for the journey. And then something else gets his attention. Huh? What is this? That's what? It's my coat. Sir, you are cheating me. How am I cheating you? You are cheating me. I, I saw. You what? have hidden camera. Yeah, I've been yeah, filming I you. I Yeah. No, 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 no. This is recording camera. Yeah. You are cheating me. I'm cheating you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are cheating me. You're cheating me. Yeah, yeah. And I've filmed you cheating me. And now I just want you to explain it to me on camera no, how you, no, che you cheated cheating me. me. We are filming you, you scamming are... me. No, no, you are scamming me, sir. You have... I'm filming your scam. No, no, you have... Now we know, so why not explain? The travel agent realises his whole scam has been caught on camera. But it still takes 15 minutes of hard persuasion to get him to talk to me. Are you really a travel agent? Can you organise tours? No, no, I'm not a travel agent. No, no. So you knew the people that stopped us yeah. in the street? And the, uh, the RTO form? This is... There's no RTO. And the real fare for a taxi from the airport? 300 rupees Indian. 300 rupees? Yeah. But you were going to charge me 11,000. Yeah. 
So is that your tactic then, is, is to grind people down, make them more and more tired, that people just say, oh, OK, fine, take it? Yes, they stop the day, they stop the day, they stop the day, and they And are you always thinking of new ideas? Yes, I think of new ideas, how to get the customer, how to get the money from them. You talk a lot. You like talking, right? Yeah, yeah, I like this type of work. What do you like about it? Because it's making money. Did you really meet Brad Pitt? No. Do you know what? I didn't really think you had met Brad Pitt. I thought maybe that was a lie. Well, I'm in a nice air-conditioned taxi and heading back to my hotel after what was the mother of all taxi scams. I've seen a few in my time, but nothing like that. There were times it was like a Bollywood movie. Started off as a bit of a comedy, ended up as a proper horror show. After that taxi ride from hell, it's actually a relief to be on foot again. I'm heading out to Calaba Causeway in Mumbai's city centre. This is where many visitors come to buy souvenirs and see some of the city's most renowned sites. So I'm going to get my hidden cameras ready and stroll around like a typical tourist. Let's see if I can attract any scams. As I browse the market stalls, a book for sale catches my eye. I have uh, that one, that. Good one, this. The scam. Real one. Real ones are not good. How much is this one? Two for 600. Two for 600. Two for 600. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks. There, bye. This is a little book that I bought at the market here. Life of Pi turned into a, into a major movie. Once you have a look inside it, you start to see why it's uh, so cheap. It's a photocopy on really cheap paper. The irony being that the one that's called The Scam is actually a genuine book. The other one is a copy. I'm not really here to go shopping, but then I spot something that I just have to buy. The largest balloon I've ever seen. How much? 50 rupees. Yeah, I'll take one. Back of discount. Uh, just one, it's so big, and one will, one will do me. Take the bag. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Hang on a second, hang on a second. How does that go that big? I said one for these. Huh? Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> How do I get one of these? The big one, no. No, just, just promotion. Advertising. <laughs> That's a little scam, isn't it? So he's walking around with a big balloon. I said, can I buy a big balloon? He said, yeah, no problem, 50 rupees. So I bought, bought one. In fact, he gave me a whole packet for 100 rupees. I thought, well, what's a brilliant deal? And then look, blow it up. What you actually get is a small balloon. I've been out. In India's biggest city, there's got to be bigger scams than this. There are billboards everywhere advertising the latest Bollywood movies, and it gives me an idea of where I should go next to look for scams. Well, this is the place all the guidebooks say the Bollywood scouts turn up looking for tourists to put in their movies. I'm going to go in there with my hidden camera on and see whether I attract any attention. This area is a popular spot for Western tourists. And I'm guessing 
many of them would jump at the chance to be in a Bollywood movie. But where there's tourists, there's bound to be scammers. I walk around aimlessly for a while, and then... Hello. Hi. 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 Am I an actor? Yes. Oh, no, I'm not. You can be. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. My name is Molly Kapoor. Molly. Yes, Molly Kapoor. and I'm a casting director. And it's my job to look for talent. <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah, uh, you have a minute. Uh, can we have a coffee somewhere? And I have a very interesting preposition for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll grab a coffee, yeah. yeah. Can, uh, but come, come, let's see. Chai, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get it. OK. Can getting spotted really be as easy as this? I guess I'll find out. Molly takes me into Leopold's, a well-known restaurant on the Colliber Causeway. So, uh, I'm a casting director and we're doing this film and I was in the vicinity to find for someone I feel fits the bill. We need a foreigner around mid-30s. Are you up for it? This is one of the most random things that's ever happened to me in my life. Life is, life is full of random we'll things, see. isn't it? It's a great part, and it's a 10-day shoot, and you will get paid. How, kind of how much? Around 300 pounds. 300 pounds? A day? A day? Yes. Wow, 300 pounds. And it used to be 10 days? Yes. There's, there's huge, huge money involved. My shoot is going to start tomorrow, so I need to fix this today. You have to make, your, make up your mind very quickly. OK, why not? Why, why, not? Yeah, why, no. not? why not? Why not? Wow. Why not? Give me a high five! Why not? <laughs> Have you shot a portfolio? No. No, no, of course not. No, but because I will need to send your pictures to my director. I mean, I can I take them on my iPhone and email no, them to you? No, 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 no. no. That won't work at all. It's, it's professional setup we are talking about. They're going to pay you. OK, we can do something. We can quickly go and find a place where we can shoot a portfolio for. Okay. Well, we could use my hotel. That's nice. Wow, that's brilliant. But we will need a photographer, and none of them will do it for free. Okay. So are you willing to shell out some money? How, how much will it be, do Around five hundred pounds. Yes. A lot. We're talking about professional portfolio here, <laughs> and you're gonna earn that money in less than two days. Five hundred pounds is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Serious money, but she tells me I'm going to make four and a half thousand bucks, so that's a good deal. It seems a little too good to be true, but I'm going to play along and see where we end up. I think four he will agree. Okay. I'm up for this. It's not every day I get asked to be in a major movie. Yeah, so breaks don't happen like that. <laughs> You're the chosen one. I arrange to meet Molly in an hour's time back at my hotel. She'll bring a photographer who she says will do my Bollywood portfolio for $600. Molly says she knows I'm going to be a Bollywood star, but what she doesn't know is that she's the one being filmed. As soon as I get back to the hotel, I tell the crew to start setting up in concealed positions. Molly and her photographer may not be shooting straight, but our cameras will be. An hour later, I get a call to say I have two guests waiting in reception. Hi, how are you? What was your name? Aditya. Call me Bob. Bob. <laughs> Adi. Connor. I'm Connor. Yeah, Connor. My photo shoot is ready to begin, but guess what? Molly has just remembered something. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, uh, I forgot one thing. Just sit. So you, you, you're not an actor, of course. No. And uh, so for every actor, there is an association. And if you're acting on a set, you have to have that card. Okay. So we will have to get your card made quickly, but it will cost some money. How much? It will cost you around 300 pounds. But we need the card. Unless okay. you can't shoot tomorrow. Okay. You so can't I'm shoot definitely today. in the movie tomorrow. Yes, yes, you are in the movie 100%. tomorrow. Of course. Okay. You don't have to worry about that, but we have to pay for the uh, union thing. Okay. $450 for an actor's permit card. If this is a scam, then she's now playing me for over a grand. Wow, this is going well. 
and Molly is my biggest fan. God, I like it. Shirts You're a born star. Oh my God, you look so good. Whatever you wear, or you not wear. <laughs> Come, my actor. Let's do another shot. Some into the pool. Some bad boy poses. Cool. You got the shot. <laughs> the more the merrier. Should we just take a look at the picture inside? Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yeah. I like this. Who Explosion knows? You will get the next Superman movie. I have to quickly rush back. I have to show these pictures because I have to get your uh, card made. That's my job and I'm really getting late. So, what about the payments? I hand over the money for my portfolio shots and my actor's card and Molly says she'll give them to me tomorrow when we meet. Cool, I'll see you tomorrow at 10. At tomorrow at 10. I'll give you your card, everything will get made. So Leopold's at 10 o'clock? Yes. Cool, right. I'll see you guys then. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. 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 I've just spent over a thousand dollars on some photos and an actor's union card. Tomorrow, I'll find out if it's enough to get me on the silver screen. Mumbai really comes alive at night. And there's plenty to see after dark. But I've only got one thing on my mind, to go to the nearest cinema, watch a Bollywood movie, and start getting into character for my big debut. The following morning, I go to meet Molly as arranged for my first day acting in a Bollywood movie. I've got to admit I'm feeling a little bit nervous in case I actually do end up on a big film set today. But 45 minutes later, my Bollywood butterflies are gone, replaced by that familiar feeling. Sure enough, when I try ringing Molly's cell phone, it goes straight to voicemail. Well, it's nearly 10 to 11, no sign of Molly, and I can't reach her on the phone. It looks like I've been well and truly taken for a ride. I'm down, what, nearly a thousand bucks? It looks like I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer to see my name up in lights. I spend the next few hours looking around the area, hoping to spot Molly but not because I'm dreaming about Bollywood. She stung me for a thousand bucks, and if I could track her down, she could spill the beans on what's a very elaborate scam. But Bollywood's not the only business in town. There's also a big market in spiritual guidance. I'm going to see one of Mumbai's established gurus. My contacts here have given me an address, but will it be a chance to enlighten my spirit or just lighten my pockets? OK, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Hello, sir. The main reason that I'm here is because I want to be successful in Bollywood because there is a girl that I want to impress. I want to impress her, I want to impress her family. I want to win her heart. And do you think you can move this obstacle from my path? Yeah, he's going to try and gauge what's wrong with you. So he's going to do some stuff. Are you okay with that? Yes, of course. So what can we do? Mm -hmm. 
ये नारियल इसके सर से घुमा अच्छा घुमा या Or maybe it's just the old catch up in the coconut trick. It's blood. It's blood. It's blood. I'm not entirely it's sure blood. what I'm supposed to make of all this. I definitely. Yeah, I mean. I'll play along and see what he comes up with next. Yep. Jalali Baba then proceeds to insert the cigarette into a tube. And it's a tiny little cigarette. That last trick was slightly more impressive than the coconut, but I fail to see what's holy about it. It would definitely help if you showed me something else. Write my name? No. No, just paper. Connor, you don't worry. Within 2013, you will become an actor. I, Jalali Baba, will pray to God, and your work will become guaranteed 100%. There may well be legitimate spiritual practitioners in Mumbai, but what I've just witnessed here appears to be a series of cheap magic tricks. Oh, until uh, Saturday. At this point, Jalali Baba starts to explain that his performance was merely an introduction to a much longer session, which begs the million dollar question. And how much will this cost me? Even though I just met. Two hundred and eighty-six thousand rupees. That's over five thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money on me right now. I maybe have two hundred pounds on me. Now he starts with the hard sell. I'd better keep him sweet. Will, will 16,000 be enough to cover the cost for now and to begin the preparations for the next stage? Sounds like a good deal. Time to leave. I pay Jalali Baba $300, the minimum I can get away with. Thank you. That was unbelievable. I mean, it was worth maybe 200 quid for the show, but you can see how, if you're at all vulnerable and desperately in love with someone that you wants to marry, you could quite easily get taken for a ride. $5,000 for that little bit of hokum. Amazing. That holy man shared one thing in common with all the other scammers I've met in Mumbai a flair for the dramatic. You can get conned out here for sure, but one thing you always get is a good performance. Molly, the talent scout, put on a great act of deception to take my money, but she's disappeared. So I'm going to meet a man who can give me the lowdown on Bollywood and its scams. Minty Tejpal, hi, good to meet you, man. Wow, Minty Tejpal is a journalist here in Mumbai. I'm good. So I got your number from, yeah. from our friend. Yes, of course. Know? Yes, of course. Because I believe you're a bit of a Bollywood 
expert and I've had oh. a bit of a bad, bad experience. Oh, what, what bad experience? What happened? OK, so I got spotted in the street by a talent scout, casting director, said, uh, you've got a really good look. This looks, you can see a look of familiarity <laughs> in your eyes already. Uh, it's a pretty popular scam because a lot of hopefuls come, come into the city every day. Yeah? A lot of these people who are scamsters and who would do these things, they would drop the right names and they would have the right information, Connor. That's part of the convincing trick. If, if they are going to spot a hopeful and going to be pitching a film or a, or a future to them, they would know which films are on the floor, who's the director, who's the producer. You can't be an outsider and be running a scam in any in industry. You'd know. You'd know the you know, ins and outs. So where would the wannabes hang out if they if they want to get spotted, if they if they want to be in a Bollywood movie, where yeah. would be the kind of hot spot? Yeah, okay. You're there? in the wrong zone right now. Kulaba, no scene. You want to head for films, Bollywood, hit the suburbs corner. There's an area called Lukonwala and within a five kilometer radius, there are a couple of coffee shops there. And in that same build, all the big studios are there. It's the hub. Everybody heads there. Because there have been stories about directors spotting talent this some years back. They want to go sit there and have their coffee and look pretty and that's the hangout zone. Okay. So that's the place to be. That's the place to be, yeah, totally. If you want to get into Bollywood, that's the place to be. Like a moth to the flame, I'm off to another place where talent gets spotted. Luck one dollar. All around me, billboards, posters and movie hopefuls all playing their part in Mumbai's version of Hollywood Boulevard. This is one of the main hangouts of Bollywood wannabes. So we're staking a place out with hidden cameras. One over there, one here, one, two, three, four around the table. I want to see if anyone else approaches me and offers to make me the next face of Bollywood. Two of the crew are posing as my friends, and it looks like we're not the only wannabes looking for a big break. The competition here is fierce, but we're doing our best to exude star quality and hope to get spotted. An hour goes by, and then a stranger approaches. Hey, how you doing? I just want to see you man. You a sportsman? Yeah, not, not a professional, though. You wouldn't have seen me play in professional sport. What's your name? Uh, my name is Tony. Tony. And you are? Connor. Uh, Connor. Uh, my friends Paul and Carl. Paul, you from England? Yeah, from London. What do you do? He's basically associated with the media. So what, you're... you're... On a vacation or what? what yeah, just here on vacation, yeah. Thought I'd come and check the place out. Like it. It's a nice yeah. place to hang out, yeah. So have you seen any Bollywood, anything? Uh... Not yet, no. Do you want to act? Do you know what? I've been told that in, in, in Mumbai, dreams can come true, let's say, that people get picked up off the street and you get into a Bollywood movie. And Does that actually happen? Yes. Sky's the limit here. Do you want to audition? Do I want to audition? Yeah. But for How part of the movie? Uh -huh. After 45 minutes, that's all it'll take. You would just take me now, we go for an audition for a part in a Bollywood movie. Just like that. Yeah. And what do I have to do? Just literally just turn up and There's a little there are a couple of lines. There'll be a video camera in front of you. Sure. You have to say the line, then you'll have to act it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll but do it. I'll do it. I'm game. I'm game. Okay. I'm game. Okay. Okay, what? Every week people are seeing somebody's dream being realized. So I think we should make a move. We can go, yeah? yeah. You ready? Tony hails a cab and takes us to a nearby audition room. So far, he hasn't asked me for a single rupee. Either he's genuine or he's running a different strategy from Molly. There's only one way to find out. Ah, the script. He hands me the script. This isn't going to be easy because some of the lines are in Hindi. The movie is a historical drama set in India during British colonial rule, and I'm playing a ruthless English army officer. In this scene, my character is trying to shoot a deer, but keeps being thwarted by an animal-loving villager. OK. So this thug has been distracting the deer. Samja. Punch Parmanis. I think I can do this. This time, I'm going to nail it. And action. Sir, this time has been distracting the deer. Samja. 
پش بار می ایس هران کوی کن نهی مرسکا So you must be a fast runner. Try saving this one. <laughs> Next time, I'll shoot you. Superman. Let's make a movie, yeah? You get this, uh, so you owe me a party. Okay. This is not for nothing. Okay, deal. Deal? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. For sure. If this is a scam, I don't get it. And if it isn't, am I really going to make it big in Bollywood? Later that afternoon, I get a phone call from Tony to say the director loved my audition and I've got a role in the movie. Where have I heard that before? Tony wants to come to my hotel to celebrate, but I'm a bit cautious, so I set up in a friend's apartment. There's something not quite right about this. We're having a party tonight to celebrate my new partner Bollywood film, but I've been here before and I've been ripped off by an agent before, so if anything fishy happens in this room, I want to see it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six hidden cameras in this room. Anything that happens in here, I'm going to see it. You bought a friend. Hi, Melody. Nice to meet you. I've got whiskey, I've got vodka, I've got, uh, you know, whatever whatever you want. I'm a vodka girl. You're a vodka girl. I have some vodka. You want it with some uh, some club soda? You want it neat? You want to sit down? Yes, yeah, sit down. Sit. Well, make yourself comfortable. Sit down. Sit down. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So that director's happy that you spotted somebody? Yeah, you, yeah. You said you like what you saw, man. I can't believe this. No, I'm really getting chilled. Yeah, why don't you help this girl? Melody is also a wannabe Bollywood star, and according to Tony, she's in with a real chance. It goes like this. Touchy, touchy, touchy. Oh, that's a kiss, 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 kiss. Oh, that's a kiss. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, it is a sexy dance. <laughs> and she's singing along with it. The dance routine is pretty entertaining, but it's not why we have six cameras in the room. Then the doorbell rings. Yeah? Is that your bell? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting anyone. You've got more friends coming over. Hello? Can I help you? What are you doing? Sorry, who are you? Who's she? Sorry, who are you? You've just walked into my friend's apartment. Just sit. Sit down. What one is that? Sit down. Huh? Yeah. Hang on, you know these guys? Cop, to sit down. Sit down, bro. Sit down. You are doing something wrong, you know. No, what am I doing wrong? I'm cop. I'm just having a drink with some friends. What, what are we? Who's this guy? Somebody called him, saying that there is a, something happening in his life. So whatever you got to do, just calm down. Okay, I'm calm, but this yeah, guy's I'm kind of intimidating. What is your name? Connor. Drinking license? You have li uh, license? I'm, I'm over 21. I think we can see that. You're doing very wrong. She's uh, underage. Please, sir. I'm 23, sir. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Show you. me your ID. I don't carry ID. Do you would like a basha? OK, 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 OK. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Yeah, you're Sorry, what, what was that? He said money. Yeah. Tony says the cop wants money and is accusing us of drinking without a license. If we don't give him money, he's going to take us to the police station. But what, we haven't done anything wrong. The problem in Bombay is that if you're drinking, even if you're 25, 30, you need a license to drink. I've only been drinking lemonade, so I'm not breaking any laws. But what Tony tells me next really worries me. He's thinking that he's not a prostitute. Is she a prostitute? I'm just asking you, I need to know now, because this is a bad situation. 
Sir, you can't go. What do we have to do to make this go away, Tony? Tony, what do we have to do to make this go away? Smile, talk to him nicely, give him some money, and that's it. How, how much money? Melody gets really upset and starts to cry, at which point Tony motions for her to leave with one of the cops. Where's she going? So you're going to leave me here with this guy? You call me here with What? How can you get to go? Hang on, what is go hang on, what is going on here, Tony? Well, you can walk out of here and I can't walk out of here. All my instincts are telling me that this is a scam. If I'm right, I'm in trouble, because this isn't the kind of guy you want to disagree with. But if I'm wrong, and he really is a cop, then things could get really complicated. This what, is what, what too is convenient. You take me for an audition, you bring me in here, this guy turns up, what does he want? £2,000? What was he saying to you? This is getting a bit nerve-wracking but I've got to stick to my guns. At what point do we break, break the charade here? What the f is wrong with you, man? What's going on here? Are you sure this isn't a scam? Let, let me explain to you. I maybe haven't been completely honest with you, but I don't think you're being completely honest with me either. I'm in Mumbai looking for scams, and I think this is a little scene for me to try and get money out of me. Tony realises he's busted, he makes a phone call. I'm not here on my own. I want you to explain to me on camera. I'm here with a with a TV yes, crew. Camera. It's it's down the road. I can bring it here quickly. What are you doing? I'm making a TV show. Yes, camera. I'm making a TV show. I don't want to cause whatever. I don't want to cause a problem for you. This is my work. Okay, this is your work. I understand. Tony says he doesn't want to do an on-camera interview. The two men argue for a minute, and then the cop tells him to leave. Tony. Coming back? But the big guy stays in the room. Just you and me? Yeah. So, here's what I propose. I tell him I've been secretly recording the scam on six hidden cameras, but I won't cause any trouble if he agrees to talk. You explain to me how this works, but I want to bring in a, a camera. Yeah. They've got a guy, do you want to bring someone in from here too? Please don't be alarmed. The full Scam City crew come into the room with a Hindi translator. So, were you ever really a policeman? No. Never. How often do you scam tourists? Sal me, dos bar, bar bar aise. Tourist ko to bhot asani se ullu banate hain. Can you remember a particular time that you scammed tourists? Ek bar ek tourist. And uh, I offer him, he wants some drugs. Or apne hi dosto ko, jab hum drugs wo le raha tha, to mere hi dost cops ban kar aaye. Or unhone kaha ye illegal hai, aapko jail jana padega. Or usse fir humne thousand dollar usse liya. So do you always work with an accomplice? Do teen. चार जने होते हैं पूरा प्लान बनाकर इसको हम अंजाम देते हैं। And uh, how long have you known Tony? Two years back. Okay, so have you done similar scams with Tony before on tourists? दो दो काम किए हैं ऐसे जिसमें उसने because my English is very weak उसने वो मीडियटर का वहाँ पे वो काम किया। So it's almost like a little scene in a in a in a film. Do you feel like a bit like an actor when you're playing out a scam? Everyone is actor. उस टैलेंट को हम कैसे उसको कैश करते हैं वो डिपेंड करता है। ये वाला स्कैम गो रॉंग। व्हेन आई स्टार्ट कंप्लीट। दिस इस बीन वन ऑफ़ द मोस्ट अलैब्रेट स्कैम्स आई हैव कम अक्रॉस। टोनी एंड मेलोडी हैव डिसअपीयर्ड इनटू द नाइट leaving me with the fake cop. A seriously deceptive individual, cold, professional, dangerous. Well, this town may be all about Bollywood, and that guy might seem like a villain from a Bond film. There's no doubt in my mind, real baddies are a lot scarier than the ones in the movies.
Some say Mumbai is named after a Hindu mother goddess, and it feels like I've experienced the mother of all scams. Everyone seems to be playing a part, but the most impressive performances I've seen have been from the people trying to scam me. All the scammers I've met have been such good actors that it seems to me like they would make it in Bollywood if they put their minds to it. Then again, maybe that wouldn't be quite so entertaining.